Dystopia tonight. Pause the musical, right? Yes. Is that uh, you're? Yes, you're just off of that. Yes, I've been, I've been awesome. doing that for like 15 years. It's the one show that I've never like aged out of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it sucks because now, when did you guys finally like? Did you guys know uh, that it was coming to an end because of COVID, or were you like going strong? And oh, then we were going it? strong. We were on <sighs> tour. We were um, had we I had come home for. Uh, we went to Beaumont, Texas. So I'm living in the Woodlands, Texas, taking care of my 91 year old parents. Oh, and wow. um, yeah, and so I, we went to Beaumont, Texas, as, and my parents came, and you know, and the, my sister, and all these, you know, it was a whole group. And then I just went home for a week, and then I was supposed to go back out. So I left all my 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 uh, luggage and my um, Kindle and all this stuff, <laughs> you know, on the tour. And I'm like, here I am, you know, a little bit later. <laughs> I don't have a Kindle anymore. <laughs> oh no it's all just yeah so it's that's it's brutal there. yeah yeah it happened i like uh, so far like we've been talking to people anybody that's been on anybody that's been normally on tour it's kind of funny because it's basically a where were you what did you drop immediately when when you were told to go <laughs> to go home Seriously. and it just i i was talking to one of the dudes that was on here was um um from uh is keith roberts from um uh Oh my God! Uh, drop kick Murphy? No, I'm wrong. Oh my God! <laughs> what is wrong with me? I'm losing my goddamn mind. Okay. We're gonna edit that heavily <laughs> <laughs> because it's one of my favorite. What am I? Am I losing it? Oh my God! Um, okay. Anyway, I, I'm gonna <laughs> fill it in here. Uh, he was. <laughs> they were still on tour. I'm having a heart attack. I'm having a, a some kind of. Fit. Listen, I live in an over fifty five community. This is just normal. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I remember the band? John's having I, a little stroke. Yeah, <laughs> we'll it's keep going. going. Still love him. <laughs> my God, is it hot? We we're just talking about the ring. Oh my Jesus! Oh, wait, oh, wait. Powder, 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 powder. There's a powder for you. <laughs> Take off the shine of space. Oh my God! Oh Jesus, that was nuts. Uh, anyway, well, yeah, people uh, were yeah. on tour. And, <laughs> yeah, and I know. Interrupted and sent home, and it was. It was crazy time. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was fucking crazy. I was coming back from. Um, I was. I was everywhere. I was on the road for a while, and I was actually making my way back to Jersey. And then I was in the uh, the last one of the last shows I had was in New York. And then we were kind of hearing like whispers of COVID stuff, and you know it was way kind of way too dangerous to be out. And like literally yeah. the next day they had released on the news that everybody had to stay inside. And if you had been in New York, you'd probably been contaminated. And so oh. I was like, the oh, fuck. <laughs> like so great that was it right but you didn't get yeah, it, it was, right you you were okay no i never got it yeah no right. i never got it i stayed inside that's why my hair looks like uh i haven't cut it i haven't gone any actually no i just got a haircut like about a week or so ago it but it was really rock long star. i'm enjoying oh it. thank you very much i appreciate yeah, that yeah star. i've decided not to get rid of it now um okay, I, I had it shorter and then i was like no nah, fuck it i'm gonna leave it i had my i let my hair grow <laughs> Probably I said twelve inches of hair to um, locks of love because I just let it keep growing and growing and growing and growing and and nice. I just I looked like Hagatha and I needed to get it <laughs> off of my body so I cut it all off and I sent it to locks of love because yeah oh that's I, awesome it's too hot I should have done something see that's you're very nice you're much nicer than me because <laughs> I I'm just I was like I'm just gonna go to get a haircut there you go <laughs> and then, that yeah. works too. That's all. <laughs> Chad, you, might not say, have, you might not have had enough hair to send to Lacks of Love. You have to have a lot to send it to them. Oh, you do? Okay. So oh, we'll look at it that way. Just, there you go. You just didn't have enough. <laughs> right. You were thinking um, about it, but you just. Yeah. Right. I wanted to. So I love <laughs> your career is amazing, by the way. Uh, Thank and you. I love everything that you're in. You're just hilarious in. But I wanted to tell you that my friends and I, uh, we, we're in solidarity with you because we feel like your character that you played on Friends was the hero of that episode and they were all villains <laughs> because you, know, you you tried to do the right thing you were trying to get a monkey out of a new york city apartment and they fought you on it but we think you're the hero well i really appreciate that I, that episode i was so sick i had a 
terrible migraine. I almost didn't, wasn't able to shoot. I, I was wow. that sick. And they had to bring a doctor in and I was like so high maintenance. And it's the only <gasps> time I have ever been high maintenance on any set ever. And when wow. they had the high school reunion, like I thought, mm -hmm. you know, oh, maybe, no, she's too high maintenance. Oh, wow. They that's didn't horrible. Say that, but that's what right, I thought. But they didn't. No. I, I mean, why wouldn't I have been there? It would have been hilarious to have Louisa Gianetti from Homeroom there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but no, Louisa. <laughs> Wow, that's I would have thought the same yeah. thing though too. I would have been like, I that they absolutely yeah. screwed me on that one. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, what was it like shooting Phoebe in the ass? Oh, it was so fun. <laughs> she's the nicest. She's the nicest. I heard she's really, really she's nice. Doll. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. And that, and that she, was the that was the first season. That was the end of the first season. So they knew that they were a hit and they were getting picked up. So it was like there was a whole like really great energy vibe happened in there. Like they were like, oh, we're successful. You know, it was <laughs> really fun. And, wow, and that's awesome. They were all super nice, but she was the nicest. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. We she came from an improv background. Were you did you take any classes yeah. and stuff like that when you first you oh, did? Yeah. I thought oh, yeah. so. Yeah. I, I Second City Groundlings. Um mm -hmm. I did oh, no. um the Kilkenny Comedy Festival with Second City in Ireland nice. with uh, the Murray brothers. That was a trip. Oh, um, I, I read. I know. I was gonna say I read that too, and I was gonna ask, what was it like working with them? Was that nuts? It was great. It was great. I mean, I, you cool. know, I, there were different companies. I wasn't with Bill. I was with um, Joel, um, and uh, you know, there were different, a whole bunch of different people. Yeah. who kind of mixed it up, and so I wasn't with Bill. But those guys, like they, they come to fisticuffs. Those boys, <laughs> and um, you know, they came back one day um, after a night, and they came back in you know black eye, and somebody had a scrape, and you know, like wow. They, <laughs> They're Irish brothers. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's, that's it. What happens? <laughs> do you miss, do you miss the improv stuff? Like, do you do you kind I, of like? You know, I, I I do in my head, but um, mm -hmm. I think the actuality of it, like actually going to a stage and doing it, like I I don't unless the, the circumstances would have to be perfect for me to, to right. do that. I loved improv, and Mark DiCarlo and I who plays my, my, he's my cartoon husband, um, mm -hmm. Jimmy Neutron. He's always trying to get me to do stuff. Like, I love him. Oh, he's like, wow. come on, we're doing this thing tonight. I'm like, I'm an old lady. I'm staying home. You know, now I'm in Texas. <laughs> so I'm, I really can't do it, but right. Uh, yeah. But I love, I always wondered that because like stand ups always seem to go back to, you know, stand up, even if they be like, even people who are like, super successful they've been in movies for a while they wind up going back or whatever and i always wondered if the improv people feel like a need to like go to improv again or if you just you're you're like ah nah we're done with it I, you know what i would love to do i actually would love it if if there were if the circumstances oh. were right i would love that like yeah um and and but i just you know i'm in texas now and i don't see that happening i'm taking care of my elderly parents yeah no i hear you i hear you that's cool though do you um uh, do you get to improv improv a lot when you're on like doing acting stuff? Does that come out naturally or, or yeah, like, sometimes you... like yeah, absolutely I, for sure voiceover stuff. Like they just mm -hmm. you know jot, most of the most of the time they'll they'll say you know let's do a password you know have fun with this one you know and oh so that's cool that that's an opportunity for sure and then they just pick what they want to use and whatever um, mm -hmm. you know doing it live on on a stage you know you can you it can go well or it can suck. So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's no cutting it and like going, Oh, this is perfect. Let's take this line. You know, <laughs> like they do with that. But right. yeah, I, I, I appreciate, um, uh, in, you know, the improv element in working. I, I love that. Yeah. That's cool because it seems like like I I feel like uh, watching you do your stuff or whatever I feel like you can tell when somebody's been doing improv or they came from an improv background because every line that you have seems genuinely spontaneous no matter whether you know it's in a movie or you know it's written but like whenever I'm watching you have fun with it especially in Robin Hood Men in Tights it just seemed like you were just going that, with it that's so funny because that is probably the most um, um, strict uh, say it this way say, you know the, wow. say the exact line yeah. So Mel is a freaking genius mm -hmm. and he would give line readings and which no other person in my history of work ha does, but he's Mel Brooks. So he gets to like, yeah. you know, he would say, <laughs> say it this way. And you know, if you left out a word, they'd be like, um, yeah, Megan, uh, you know, in this last take, you didn't say the, the, you know, it was like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, so you would think it would be crazy improv, but yeah. it, it it wasn't. It wasn't. Wow. I oh, wow. Yeah. I thought that that was. I I really did. I thought that would be like the most loose set. But wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Do you know what's funny is that we. It's like six degrees of Megan Kavanaugh on a station lately. So we have <laughs> J D Shapiro has been our Wednesday guest. Oh, oh my gosh. 
so much fun and give me some stories on him because he's been coming back. And <laughs> and then uh, we have Mr. Heckles from Friends, who you were in a scene with yeah. on Saturday. Oh, that's right. That's right. Mr. I forgot Heckles. Mr. Heckles. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Larry wow. Hankin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Such oh, a small awesome. world. Yeah. We should have had him pop up in a box underneath <laughs> Megan and like hit the, have to, like, the broom. Have to like a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Because he stole the monkey. Oh my god, that's brilliant! <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh my god, that's fucking hilarious. I, yeah, I wanted to did... ask. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was no, going to no, say ahead. I wanted to ask. Uh, a League of Their Own was that your first? That was your first like breakout role. Yes. And how did and, that come about? Oh my god. So I, Kathleen York is an actress and a singer. She goes, um, she goes by Bird, and she's actually Academy Award nominated. She's awesome. And um, she called my apartment back in the day when there were t telephone answering machines. Um, I had a roommate who was a trainer, and she was calling him to say, "Would could she? Could he?" Um, do baseball training for her because they were making everybody pay, play baseball before they could even read. Mm -hmm. And so I answered the phone. I have a Chicago accent. She said, are you from the Midwest? Yeah, we get to talk. And she says, they're doing this movie with all the, uh, these women and they, they need baseball players. If you know how to play, you know, you should do it. She totally helped me. She, she wow. gave me the name of the casting director. I called the casting director herself, answered the phone, Amanda Mackey, like, what the hell, right? And then <laughs> wow. I, 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 yeah, and it just snowballed. Like I, I played really well. I got to play in a game. I got to, you know, I, I, I like weaseled my way into an audition and got to play ball. And then, I mean, it, it was just, a, it was just absolutely aligned with the universe. Like it, That's it was, incredible. it was an amazing experience. And I was the fourth lead on the call sheet. My name was between Tom Hanks and Madonna. Like, wow. you know, the character had a much, much bigger part than ended up being in the movie. Like I, my mm -hmm. character gets traded and she gets pregnant and she gets hurt and all this stuff oh, happened wow. that didn't end up in the movie. So I never knew that. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. that's so this character, you know, and it was my first movie. And we went back to um, Berwyn, Illinois, to shoot um, the Suds Bucket. They used a mm -hmm. bar called the Fitzgeralds. And I called Fitzgerald's, and I went to school in the town next to Berwyn. I went to Oak Park River Forest High School. Wow. And like, it was like, uh, how, what are the odds? And the, the people that owned that bar, I played volleyball with her in high school. Like, it was just, oh, wow. it was just nuts. It was like, hometown <laughs> girl does good. Like, I came back, <laughs> you know. That's incredible. But Did like, you shoot the egg? So, wait, you, you had a longer part in that, in that, yeah. uh, I mean, and your part was great at, in and of itself anyway, but like, did you shoot the other stuff? We shot everything. The original length of the movie, I think, was four and a half hours before she cut it. <laughs> And <clears throat> my storyline wow. was connected to a kiss that that Tom Hanks and Gina Davis's characters had, and that got cut. So everything that was sort of with that went away, which was fine, you know. I, right. Okay, I would I would have been happy to have been, been an extra in that movie. Like yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. I could not believe I got the part I got. Like I was just so. Well Oh, just so freaking. We need happy. to start a hashtag for release the Penny Marshall cut because <laughs> that's <Right>. like, <laughs> like yeah. I want to see all of that. So I love League of, the, League of Their Own. Is like one of my my uh she could, she couldn't be here, but I Joanne Filan is a uh, um a good good comic friend of mine, and we go on the road together all the time. We travel everywhere, and we will literally sometimes randomly break into the song. Uh, <laughs> Are you my song? Oh yeah, you? like oh for no re like like I mean it'll just be like a quiet drive for like a couple whatever, and then one of us will just start it out of the blue because we just love the movie, and for some yes. reason, um, we'll I, I, we'll go back to our hotel rooms or whatever it is, and the League of Their Own's just on, and I we're like, that. is this movie following us? Like, but it, <laughs> like truly, it was we love you, and and we and uh, Thank you. you know, it was just it's one of those movies that was like it's just comfort food on the road. So yeah, uh, yeah, well, and Alan, we couldn't. Yeah, I, I'm so Go sorry. Ahead. I saw I saw a little thing that came up from somebody saying, "Where oh. were you when you were singing to Nelson?" No, she, when you, the bar, Elton. she said, it's "Where you were singing to Elton?" Great, yeah. were you singing to but Elton? It's great Nelson. scene. It's Nelson. Oh, Nelson. Right. Oh yeah, <laughs> she never messes up. Right. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna be mortified Alan, now. Alan Wilder played Nelson, and okay. we were in Chicago at Fitzgerald's. That's that's wow. Where we, that's where we did it. So. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. That was always kind of like a I I like it's it, we were when you watch that movie like I can't believe that you just disappear. You know what I mean? Right? Like you go off oh, like we were like what the <laughs> So there's a story so if you watch there's a there's a um a, a version of League um where me and Penny Marshall and Lori Petty and Tracy Reiner 
narrate. It's the director's cut. And we're oh, narrating no through the whole thing. And we're saying, oh, and this happened, and oh, this happened. And we tell all these stories while while the movie's playing. Mm -hmm. And um, um, yeah, it was, uh, I, I forgot what, I just, look at, I'm having a senior moment. I forgot what brought me on this moment. Um, I, I, I had, whatever I had before, I passed it on to you. So we're just gonna <laughs> cut real quick. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Everyone's having little mini strokes oh right now God. on this show. The first I don't time know I've what it is. People. <laughs> it's that it's Japanese virtual. satellite I was talking about. It's hovering over, <laughs> fucking with everybody's shit. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. No, we were talking about that you just disappear. Like, like your yes, character's like, so, you know, gone. Yes. So I snuck into okay, they had a they had a test marketing of movie of League of Their Own. And I, okay. somebody had tickets and called and it was like through a friend of a friend. And I mm -hmm. was like, I was seven months pregnant because I got pregnant wow. on the movie. Wow. And oh, okay. they were showing us, and I went in disguise. I had thick Coke bottle glasses. I had a trench coat. And I, I went and watched the movie with people, nobody I knew, because they were like friends of friends, right? Right. And I was sitting there, and here comes, you know, here comes this face up, and mm -hmm. I'm like, ah! Like I literally screamed <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, Penny and all the producers were there. If I, they had seen me there, I would have gotten in a lot of trouble. Right. And, um, but oh. I mean, oh, it was just, it was crazy. So what happened was in the scene where I get married, she gets traded to Racine to be near her husband, Nelson, who makes cheese. And oh. it's a gift from the league. And that footage, Penny said, is gone. Like they, they, It was in black oh. and white. That was wow. in the original version. And then she gets traded. So when, when Kit's character gets traded, they're like, Marla's there. You'll be with Marla. You know, like, and mm. at the end of the movie, this is just a little funny thing. But at the end of the movie, when all of the older ladies are in their um, sweatshirts, yeah, I think the white, it's white sweatshirts for the peaches and dark blue for Racine. And Marla's in a dark blue um, sweatshirt because oh she was traded God, to Racine. No. So yeah, there's like these little things. So when uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking too fast, but here's what happened. No, no, it's, it's great. So we were doing ADR for the movie mm -hmm. and, um, and we're doing the scene with, uh, when I'm getting into the car at my wedding and, and Penny goes, um, yeah, you're going, you're going to say, see you next season here. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. She was like, yeah, I'm, I'm real sorry about that. But we had to cut it because you know, it was too long. You know? We had to cut the movie and, and your part got cut. And I'm real sorry, but you just say, see you next season right here. And I was like, okay. So off screen, you hear, see you next season. And then they all oh. throw the stuff at me. I yeah. said, Marla would never have left the league for anything. Not That's a man, right. not the lotto. Like, she just wouldn't have left. So, yeah. But that's what they did. And, you know, I was happy to be in the movie. So yeah. what happens? That is crazy to me. Yeah. I had, I always wondered that. Like, yes. what the hell? I'm like, they just, yeah. Wow. These yeah. are incredible that's... tidbits. Now I, have, now I have to go back and watch it again to catch, like, all oh, the tidbits. I yeah. Love it. Well, if we're doing tidbits, I'm going to give you one more that's really funny. So yes. still well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> takes that glove and throws it at him. And he literally goes like this. Bump and falls because yeah. Penny was going, fall down, fall down, fall down, fall down, fall down, fall down. <laughs> and he goes, looks over and he's like, oh, plunk. So every time I see that now, I can hear her voice. Right? Oh my God, that's yeah. great. Whack, fall down, fall down, fall down, <laughs> plunk. Oh, so, so great. That is one of the scenes that I will, I will never stop laughing every time I've seen it, especially because Tom Hanks is like, yeah, got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the joy. I that know. scene and the bus scene where he accidentally kisses the. Yes, uh, Pauline, Pauline yes. Gillsford. Yes. Who's Lou? Miss Cuthbert. Kills oh. me. Yes. Oh, God. Although I didn't like that she gets thrown dirt in her face. That, that part's always that was, bugged me. It's always yeah. bugged me. That was a weird, a weird a thing weird to do. Thing. Very right? weird. Very yeah. Weird. And I was like, I remember like, why would he what do that? Right. Yeah. He's quitting. He doesn't and, have any reason to do that. And it's the 40s. And so there's even more of a kind of a respect back yeah. then. You know, exactly. maybe yeah. now it's a little bit kooky. Pardon me a moment, please. <sighs> sure. <laughs> 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 oh my god that's so great yeah it was another thing too is like i always wondered like where the fuck is he going right. <laughs> he's just Where's walking he off walking to right yeah right. i was like oh god yeah. so many good was it was it like were you in shock working with penny marshall and stuff like because it was penny rosie o'donnell madonna like okay. who who was on so, the cast when you got hired when i got hired it was deborah winger as okay. Gina davis's part okay deborah wow. winger um um and it was Lori Petty 
Tracy Reiner, Freddie Simpson, Rosie was there. There was no Madonna. There was no Gina yet. Um, wow. And we started playing ball from the moment, uh, like um, we had a, a baseball training from the moment we were hired okay. for no pay. They, were, they weren't paying us anything until, wow. it was very weird. Anyway, but so I started in May. We started, mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm sorry. We started shooting in May. We, this was um, two months before, about two, two months before. Anyway, whatever. That we had, <laughs> and, and so as we were um, doing, we had like Monday through Friday, like eight hours, like baseball training. And they had mm -hmm. the coaches from University of Southern California. Rod Dato, God rest his soul, was our main our manager, if you will. And, um, and, and he had all his coaches and we did a lot of, of, of work, a lot of work. Wow, I did, wow. I was doing 80, 85 in the cage, both sides. I had to bat, I had to learn to bat left-handed wow, and I did switch wow. hit. I switch hit in that, in the scene at the gym. Um, yeah. And I was doing about 80 miles an hour in the cage at the time that I did that, that scene. Holy shit. And Penny was like, she said, I want you to hit, hit every ball. And I was like, you know, this is all like a live pitcher. You wow. can't ask a major league baseball player to hit every ball off of a live pitcher. Yeah. But, I mean, but I, I, I freaking did, man. I just reached. I did anything. I, I did not let a ball or a strike go through. I, hit, I made contact with every single pitch. Wow. And, and we did so many, so many pitches. I don't even know how many. It was hours. It was so long. And my arms were aching and the next day when i came to work they gave me a trophy for like batting champion <laughs> wow it was really sweet that's yeah. incredible i didn't realize that you guys trained that hard oh we trained hard they wanted to make sure that we looked real i mean yeah. um you know and yeah. I, I you had to have some skill or you absolutely weren't gonna get um you weren't gonna get you weren't gonna get cast so right. we were training training blah 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 and then madonna we hear Madonna got mm -hmm. cast and Deborah Winger had um, uh, a thing in her contract of like cast approval and she hadn't been asked about that. And there was some hubbub. Wow. And um, the next thing we know, Deborah comes to us and says, you guys, I have to leave. I can't, I can't do the show. I'm, 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 I'm out. And we were like, she was our, our captain. Like she went yeah. to UCLA one day cause she's a Bruin and she hates the Trojans, you know, at USC. So yeah. she, she rented UCLA one day for us to like play there because she just was like, you know, yeah. she, she was amazing. She was our captain. Wow. And when she left, we were like, what's going to happen? Who's it going to be? Oh then, my God. And then it was Gina who's fantastic and wonderful and Mensa. And she's, yeah. It was amazing. I, I, I couldn't I, believe I was with all these people. Like, I, I, I mean, I'm just a Chicago actress. You know, I've done some commercials. Uh, I had never done a movie. I've right. done a ton of theater. and But I had never done a movie. And I got this part. Like, it was just, it was miraculous. That's incredible. And you do a great Penny Marshall. Is that because oh. on Drunk History you played Penny Marshall? Yeah. Did you? <laughs> well, no, I did. I could do. I did Penny before I got Drunk History, and I asked them if they wanted me to do that, and they said, "Don't, mm -hmm. no, don't, don't, just, just be you, just do you." And oh, I was okay. Like, oh. <laughs> but that was that was amazing. And you know what? The day that I was going to tell her that I was playing her is the day she died. Oh my oh, god! No. I was so sad. Like I couldn't tell anybody that I was doing it. And I had gotten like an okay to, to tell her. And I, I was, that was the day. And I was going to tell her. And she oh passed away goodness. that day. It was crazy. That's so but, crazy. Yeah. So I'm, um, I know she would have been, she would have thought it was funny. And she would, you know, we were friends and she, she, she would have liked it. She would have thought it was funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, it was, uh, I, I, that came out of the blue. That just, they just offered me that. And said, How hey, was hey. Drunk History? I always, I, whenever I watch God. them, like these actors nail it. Like they yeah. nail it. My God, I, that was probably one of the funnest shows I've ever done. Really? It, because wow. yeah, because he's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I just love him to death, and everything. You know, like I wanted to be the drunk on the show. Like I wanted to come back. <laughs> and like, you know, let's drink some Irish whiskey and let's do this. Right. And I, you know, he he he. I think he couldn't do. I think he had a image of me of like. 
no, you're, oh no, like, you know, you're, the, <laughs> you're, an, old, you're an elder, you're an actor. Like it was, I don't know, it, but it was, he, he didn't, he didn't want to see me like that. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I just love him. Anyway, that, that was, it was really, really fun. And those, those actors that work all the time, that, that company of actors, mm -hmm. they're so good and so funny. Everybody's super nice. It was a great set to be on. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Was that like uh like a, a like you keep in touch with those people afterward kind of a thing? No. Like okay. <laughs> I don't, that's the sad thing about I know it's terrible. I was gonna say it seems like it's a great like, experience. I wonder if uh you're like we're all tight. Oh my god, you're so you're so tight for so long. And then mm -hmm. it's like done. Um I'm still <laughs> I'm still friends with almost all of the actresses. Like we still get to, we we have oh, reunions nice. and we get, and we're like a dysfunctional family, you know, like right. we, we, this was a lot of our first movie. Um, and you know, so it, it, that movie is we do, but, um, that's cool. Yeah. I wish I had stayed in touch with so many of those people, but I, did, I felt, you know, it was weird. I don't know. I'm, I'm a weirdo. I like, I could have stayed, I absolutely could have stayed in touch with Mel Brooks and felt like, Oh no, I don't want to bother him. You know? Right. And I did two movies. He asked me to do a second movie and he had a part that he wrote with me in mind. I was like, sure. Oh, wow. Dracula dead. That's Mother incredible. Dead. It was. Oh no way. Yes. Yeah. It, he That's asked me, to play Essie, the 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 maid to made me uh, not made me the gal that played me yeah 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 Amy the same, yeah right yeah. Um, that's great so, yeah. and he knew that when you when you were shooting uh, Men in Tights you hadn't you known about well, that or was that afterward I, that was afterwards yeah okay and it was just an but, offer it was like hey Mel wrote this part for you will you do it I was like um wow. yeah that's <laughs> I'll great do it. Like, oh my Mel god wrote it for me Hell yeah, yeah. Tell that's me incredible. Either. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I have one more question Wait, I, have, I have tons of questions about league of their own but how did they get the people who played you guys in the end uh, like they were dead almost like it, it, like you could tell immediately when people were walking up right. you were like oh my god that's marla that's right. you know gina david how right. who the hell were they that was penny an excellent casting with ellen lewis they wow. they cast that beautifully and they used gina davis's voice for the older, uh, oh, the yeah. older daddy, um, and they actually had us all record the older lady's voices, and they wanted the option to be able to do that. But wow. um, yeah, they only did. They only used Gina's voice, and I heard that. And Madonna was not happy with her um, older lady. She didn't. She, I think really? She thought, I think she thought she'd be more glamorous looking, or I don't know. More, <laughs> I don't know. But I thought it was perfect. She had the space between uh, her teeth. It was everything. Yeah. It was like, yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. And she yeah. still had like a bit of a spunk to her or whatever. Like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. She had that sassy, yeah. right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I thought that was, I thought, I, again, you knew, like, even Rosie O'Donnell's uh, character, yes. you know, at yes. the end, it was like, oh my God, they totally look like they've been best friends forever. I, I don't know. know. Yeah. Oh my Isn't God. That funny. I know. Yeah. That's, great. that's crazy. Was it cool? Like I, I, there was another thing too. Like I'd heard that like, um, you know, uh, Gina Davis, was there tension between Gina and Rosie on the set? Did you feel any of that? Or were you guys just all kind of gelling and, Oh, um, between, between Gina and Rosie? No, that's what I, okay. Cause I had read some, I was okay, like trying so to do some like, sitch. okay. You got, yeah. you got all these women mm -hmm. uh, for five months in 90 degree heat with 95 percent humidity oh, all okay. summer long right i mean you know people are going to have moments but everybody got along I mean, oh it good wasn't, okay it wasn't you know and i was switzerland big time because my <laughs> <laughs> i mean i was just like camp to camp to camp wherever hey, you're going over here you know my ex-husband was with me when i did that. okay. that's how i got pregnant um and that's how that works kids <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, my ex-husband was with oh. me, and um, so I had uh, I could get away from the group and be mm -hmm. with him, you know, like because it because the group got to be a lot sometimes, you know. We were together yeah. all the time, and mm -hmm. and it was a lot. But, and um, learning how to play <laughs> right. on top of it all too. Right. Well, we had you guys could have had your own league. Could have, you know, I <laughs> foolishly played in a league after the movie came out with women who were way better than I was. <laughs> and I ended up shattering my right orbit <laughs> with the ball. Oh my God. Yeah. That was the end of my baseball. I was like, I'm done. I get oh, it. Wow. I would have walked away too at that yeah. point. Yeah.
Please yeah, I played t-ball when I was a kid and got one right to the face. So I was like, hey, we're done here. Right. <laughs> I was like eight. I'm like, I think I'm good. I, think I don't I'm think good. I'm going to do this. You know, so, I'm in my yeah. early 30s. I think I can stop now. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with 18 year olds that are like, you oh know, going to the Olympics, you know? <laughs> uh, bastards. Those bastards. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so uh, that's so you were you were on a uh, um men in tight suit. That was another cast that was like insanely <sighs> just wildly talented. Carrie Ellis, um oh my god, Roger Dave Chappelle. Reese, Dave Chappelle, yes. Who, what was the guy's name? Wait, was it Ro I, I see, I don't know. I don't know his name. Who played Blinken? Oh, Mark. Uh, Mark blank blank and blank and blank and something blank and something okay. blank and field blank. I can't blank and ship. I can't remember his name. Almost any interaction, all of you guys. Yeah, almost any reaction all you guys have with him on the set is just fucking hysterical. <laughs> like that is that that whole thing with all of you was just fucking too good. Yeah, that was Dave Chappelle's first movie. Yeah, was it really his first? He was, and he was like twenty one, I think. He was so young. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. I didn't realize it was his first one. I think it was his first. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was his first. I, I didn't get to work with him very much. You know, I only pretty much just worked with Carrie and um, and um, Amy uh, Yazbek, and then I got to. Oh yeah. You know, like yeah, I got to Eric Allen Kramer, and I he played my love interest. He's he's played he's Big John. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, um, he's uh, Big John. He, yeah. That guy he's, was so fucking hilarious too. In that, yeah. um. Yeah, that was great. That was like one of that was one of my when I was a kid. I think I had like I think the VHS is ruined, pretty much. Oh, <laughs> like I love from rewatching that. that. <laughs> from oh, re that's that. Right. Yeah, which I still have yeah. all my VHS tapes. Like a loot. Like I I don't have. I think I have one VHS player that I'm like holding on to for no re like. But <laughs> I do too. Me too. I have. One do you too. really? Just, just, I just I've got a lot of tapes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I got I a lot of tapes. Me too, and I won't get rid of them. I'm like right. I, I'm like you kidding me? I've been I've been building this fucking collection forever. So right. they're just now they're in a closet. But you know. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but yeah, that was one of the ones that my friends and I would watch constantly all the time and just quote. Um, you know, every, every scene, it was just, it was just too fucking funny. I can't feel uh, so bad that I can't remember Mark's last name. It's blank and something. I'll put blank, it up. I can't. Blank. Blankfield. 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 Okay. 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 Yeah. Mark, All right. Thank Mark you. Blankfield. My pleasure. Yeah. yeah he, that was just guy. one of the, yeah, that was a great, uh, I was always hoping <sighs> they would do a sequel too, because it seemed like you guys could have kept going on forever, but that's just, uh, men in tights yeah. is one of my, yeah. Tom's wife said Ben and Ty's woman. She it's quotes one of the it constantly. Does yeah. she? All, all the time. All <laughs> the time. <laughs> that and League of Their Own, which is amazing. Wow, that, I'm in both I, of those. Hey. Both oh, yeah. of them. I'm telling you. You are <laughs> definitely her spirit <laughs> actress. I Literally everything that. you've done has been killer. Like, it's just not like, you just seems like, do you, like, do you feel like you've just been kind of like blessed, like going from one thing to the other, just knocking him out of the park? I mean, that, you know, and then now that I know that, that, uh, he wrote that movie specifically for you, I was just like, that that's part, incredible. Not the whole part, movie, the part. The part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say the whole movie. Why not? Ooh, go for <laughs> I can say what I want. <laughs> Nobody's. <laughs> it's not, I'm making, it's not, one of, it's not his best movie, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Little oh, Dread, loving it. I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. God. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. When did uh, you, you know, get? He to... came, Mel came no, no, to, to a Jimmy Neutron and played a Jewish Santa, um, oh, and wow. that was the, I, that was the first time I had seen him since I had do, done the movie. I did not know that. Uh, yeah. Wow. And, and everybody in the studio at we were mm. at Nickelodeon. Everybody at the studio. My little had, cousins loved Jimmy Neutron. Oh yeah, had, they all had something for him to sign. Like they were out the door, people were lined up out the door. Like, would you mind signing this? Yeah, yeah, he's comedy royalty, right? Oh he's my like God. So one he's of the, the legends. Best. Yeah, I grew up on like um, um, History of the World. I feel like that was yeah. one of my like go to yeah. Yeah. As a kid, loving it. Right. Yeah, yeah great. How did, how did you make the conversion yeah. over into uh, voiceovers too? Because you you do, you're so prolific with that as well. Thank you. Well, my friend Mark DiCarlo, who is my cartoon husband, he and I did Second <laughs> City together. He um, he asked. He knew the guys. Uh, one of the, the one of the main guys that was putting it all together, and he asked if we could audition together because we oh. have great chemistry. And um, and they said yes. So we auditioned together and we booked it together. Wow. So if it, were, if it wasn't for him, like that was my foray. I had done some, I had done a couple of cartoon things uh, before that, really odd um, mm -hmm. cartoon things. Uh, I did a Jimmy, a Johnny Quasar 
okay. yeah. Wow. Anyway, yeah, it was weird. Um, <laughs> and I got to work with some really great people doing voiceover stuff, but um, as well as you know, uh, uh, live action stuff too. But anyway, the so he got me into it, and then I, you know, I had an agent and everything, and they were, they were, you know, they promoted me and they helped me, and I booked some stuff. I got to be Amy Poehler's mom. Um, on the Mighty Bee, which is a cartoon that she did. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. I have a great story. So I came to, I was heavier than I am now when I did, mm -hmm. when I was doing that. And I came and there was a gal in our cast who was pregnant. And one day she came to the set. She was like, Megan, oh my God, when are you going to pop? <laughs> oh not pregnant, not pregnant, <laughs> not pregnant. Oh, no. and, and she no. literally, I watched her face drain of color. <laughs> Absolutely trained. She was just like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was like, it's all good, sister. Don't worry. We're good. Oh, my oh, God. Mortified. Mortified. It was a different oh, that's, another gal that's, cast. So, those, are, yeah. those are awkward moments. Oh, my God. Yeah. Awkward. That's too great. Totally. <laughs> Um, do you prefer the, the voice acting to anything? Like, do you feel like you like that a little bit better? Because you've done movies, TV. Like, you were, um, uh, you married Al Borland, which I don't think a, a lot of people, rem which I, I watched Home Improvement when I was a kid. And you That's were, again, goal. hilarious on that, too. But, like, do you like, do you have a preference for movies, TV, voiceover? You know, theater's my first love because that's okay. how I found all of this. Mm -hmm. um, movies and TV pay a lot, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And and TV, the TV that I was doing generally was um, more like plays because it was sitcoms in a studio with an audience, scene okay. to scene. You know, movies are completely out of order. Um, you know, when we did League, the first thing we shot was my wedding, which was wow. good because I was skinnier then. And as the movie <laughs> went on and I discovered the craft food service table, I gained a few pounds. So... So, yeah. So, I mean, so movies are, movies, it feels more out of control in terms of your performance because you don't know what, what, what cuts the, the director's going to use. You just have mm -hmm. to trust that, you know, you gave the right thing, the right performance and that they're going to do the right thing, but you don't right. know. Um, so I, I probably, theater's my, my first love. And then I guess, I mean, I love all of it, but doing, okay. So being in the studio, doing a voiceover is so liberating because you, you nobody's seeing you. You mm -hmm. can look like crap. It doesn't matter. You can, you know, you you're just getting to act and just be crazy with other right. crazy people, which is so much fun. Right. It's just I've had I've been so lucky. I That's just feel awesome. so so blessed. I have a a voiceover studio um, that I set up in my closet here in the woodlands in Texas. Um, wow. Oh, and nice. I've been uh, doing some auditions in here, but now they all want you to like be, you know, an engineer. You got to like, you have source connect and you have to be able to, you know, broadcast quality. I'm like, <laughs> not so <Yeah>. much. You know, <laughs> oh, I know. how to do all that shit. When, uh, oh, <laughs> no, yeah. it's okay. You're fine on this <laughs> channel. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Sorry, no when they when the when the pandemic first hit i my agent had sent me some stuff and you know you get the whole thing and then they wanted you to do it um whatever it's like oh you can't come out here to audition so we're gonna we're gonna have you do it or whatever and then i didn't mind it i was like yeah let me set up the green screen let me do all the shit and i got the sides for this one it was for a nathan's hot dog commercial right which you know whatever right. um but i was like oh cool and then uh um but it, th the sides were like for me and four of the people were in it they were supposed to read. And I was like, well, I don't have four other people. Like, what am I supposed to do? And they were like, well, um, just get some, you know, get some friends, set up a Zoom call, have them read those lines. And I'm just like, oh, and I got it at like uh, 11, 11 o'clock at night. And they wanted it at nine o'clock in the morning. So I was like, <laughs> what? Well, my, wow. first of all, oh people God. work. Second, you know, so I'm like, uh, that's, I'm like, I was like, so, and then I'm, in my head, I'm going, you know what? Maybe I could read the other parts, record it, play them. I'll go back. And then I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? Right, <laughs> and I right, call right. my agent. I was like, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to pass, which pass. is hilarious because I shouldn't. <laughs> and, and I, and I think even she had the kind of attitude that was like, you're going to pass. <laughs> like, you don't have, like, you don't have a whole lot going on right now. And I was like, yeah, I know. I don't care. <laughs> I just don't oh, want to. I was like, funny. that's crazy. And then oh I was like, God. oh, and then they were like, could you also wear um, the appropriate, like in one, I was supposed to be a skateboarder. So I had to have, <laughs> they asked me to have padding. I don't have, I don't skateboard. I don't have right. pads. 
Right. Yeah. So I was like, you know Could what? Could you put if your I... nurse uniform on, please? <laughs> and the little hat to go with it at 11 yeah. o'clock at night. That he's got. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I have that. Not going to lie. Yeah. Tom, Tom has gotten the pictures. He knows. Uh, <laughs> you promised me you'd never tell. <laughs> oh, God. That's awesome. Oh, I do look good, though. I bet uh, you so that, no, um, <laughs> But, yeah, it was crazy. And I was like, well, you know what? If they can if, – if, if I got to pretend I'm talking to four other people, they can pretend I'm wearing an outfit. Right? And then, you know, nobody yeah. liked that. So, yeah, it's fucking weird. Yeah. I admire that you put your own studio because I had to get under. I did a, I did one of the voice things and somebody told me this works because I don't, I've, I haven't done a lot of, I did like one or two voice things over the years, but somebody had told me if you pull like a blanket, if you get like your phone, put the blanket, a couple blankets over your head, it creates like a, a good sound studio. And then I felt like I was like, I, exactly. But I also You're felt like your ass off. Hang on. <laughs> I just pass out. <laughs> like, uh, but it was also one of the things like halfway through it, I was under there and I was like, if this is a fucking practical joke, I swear to God. Like, cause I was like, felt like right? an idiot. I'm like, blankets light you know oh, door yeah, closed yeah. lights off oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. meanwhile people are robbing my house while i'm under there i'm like all right <laughs> <laughs> i'm under the blanket oh, carrying God. furniture out oh that's right yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good it's it's fucking it's just weird though but that's but like uh, have you been doing all right during the like what have you been doing during the pandemic like just so, to keep yourself you know i've been living with my parents who are right. 91 right mm -hmm. <laughs> that's been my that's been pretty much what i've been doing um <laughs> we <laughs> The pool opened April 1st, so now we're going Ooh, swimming, which is yeah. lovely. Yeah. Um, I found, I, oh, hello, light. You just I, it up a little. I, 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 thought, I thought that too, and I was like, uh oh. What's happening? <laughs> um, I, I used to ride, I used to do centuries bicycling when I was in my 20s, when I was young. Mm. And I worked for Bicycling Magazine there for a while and all this. And I, um, I awesome. discovered my bicycle and I'm doing 20 mile rides three days a week with uh, two other gals. And we did it all through COVID. The what? three of wow. us, even if masked, we would go. And it, mm -hmm. it was just, it was like the saving grace for me because it was wow. getting outside. It was in nature. It was mm -hmm. very, I mean, a very wooded area, but really pretty. And they've made like, I don't know, almost 200 miles worth of like uh, paths to bike and walk on. And they're all oh, flat. That's awesome. So it's like, nice. yeah, I'm not doing hills, you know. And so I'm, I'm rediscovering bicycling again, which just makes me so happy. Yeah. I love and, bicycling. I have, uh, I have a, um, uh, it's called, they're, I don't know, uh, they're called specialized. So they're like a hybrid. Um, I got that a couple of years ago. I used to go biking all the time because I ran track when I was in high school, but me I used too. to get shin splints. Oh, you know, me yeah. too. I, I, yeah. okay, so I, I was like, I knew we had more, uh, a couple of things to go <laughs> I've read, I read a little bit about you, but I try to slide it in. Like I, I'm like, I ran track. Did you oh run track? God, no. um, but yeah, I ran track, but I used, to, I used to get shin splints. Like there's no tomorrow. I have no idea why. I was always you didn't have good at doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, I. Back then, I, you probably were I, kids. You probably were running in like stupid. Back then, you know, well, back back then in my day, kid. I'm telling you, <laughs> we, we ran in sandals. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, god, god. Like, yeah it was but it was it was probably the fucking shoes i probably had garbage you know whatever the hell i was day. wearing and of course that still got hurt so i was like i'm just gonna bike i love biking and i yeah. started doing that and my friend and i we but we have the you know the apple watch um so we kind of like she's in she's in texas oh. and she'll do her stuff and i'll do mine and they'll just like whenever we're done with the workout, we'll just kind of see that they went like 10 miles. Every time I go like above, like whatever, she's like, the fuck? Like, I'll go like, you know, because <laughs> like she'll do, she'll do like whatever, like five or, or seven miles. And then, you know, sometimes I just keep biking. So I'm just like, right. I get back from like 15 or whatever. And she's yeah. like, hey, like I thought we were doing this together. And I'm like, oh, we oh, are. But yeah, that. yeah, it's, but it's, it's been good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that they have trails for you because yes. we, I live in, have you ever been to, you've been to Jersey? I, I've been to Jersey, but I haven't like been to any, like anywhere fun, you know? Okay. Uh, well, there is nowhere fun. Toured so fine. There. <laughs> so <there's>, uh, <laughs> there is, there we have, we have some, we have a, you know, we have beaches, boardwalks and yeah, stuff, yeah. but otherwise, you know, it's all right. Um, so, uh, so, but I live um, in LBI and we have like a bridge to go over and I didn't, 
I don't mind. I'll ride wherever the hell I want to ride. I took my friend over the bridge and I, we both thought we were going to die. Like they just recently put in a trail, thank God, because of COVID. So I felt like I had a, like a bike path. They didn't have one. But in my head, I was like, that has got to be something, nothing. And we were just, I'm like shouting back. I'm like, I'm like, it's going to be fine. I'm like, we'll oh, Uber back. But my yeah. God. Was, oh my so when you God. said they had tra actual trails for you, I, yes. I appreciate that. I know what that's like. And it's, you know, we're just, we're, it, we're going at an easy pace. It's not, we're not going super fast. And it's, you know, and soon enough, like the first day that I went out, I was like, uh, you know, they're like, well, we're probably going to do about 15 miles. I like, oh, I don't think I can do that. And then guess what? I could. Like, yep. because <laughs> and we stop for a little while. We have a little coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we, then we get back out and we ride. Like, it's, it's that's just nice. lovely. It's so lovely. Yeah. I wish it I is. had things to promote. I, I'm like thinking, like God Almighty, what am I doing? Like, I haven't done anything. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I hear you. It's fine. This is like the one show you don't have anything to. You don't need to have anything to promote because Good. that's I. Yeah, it's people are people. Sometimes I swear to God, this. Uh, we had one. Didn't we have one guest on who like plugged a book, and then when we looked, it was like six years ago, and I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh God I mean, it's him. fine. But I was like, oh, I felt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I feel like he thought he had to, but wow. Yeah, but I was like, oh no, that's fine. I mean, that, that what what the hell else has anybody been doing over right. this? You know, I mean, like, I literally just got fully Pfizered a couple of weeks ago. I got so Pfizer I can, too. I can be out yes. in the world now, you know. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, I still wear a mask, but you know what I mean. Like, I, yeah, I, yeah, you can be out. And so, I'm yeah, I'm I'm very. I had auditioned for a uh, a TV show. I mean, like probably the day before they shut everything down. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whatever happened to that TV show. And I don't know, like, you know, yeah. like things were starting to hum for me. And I was like, what the? Yep. <laughs> now, I know what you mean. I was out, I was out in LA uh, pitching a show. I'd done a short film. It's on Amazon Prime. Um, and uh, it's with a puppet. It's about depression. And the main character is depression manifests itself into a puppet. And we designed the puppet to look like so me, good. and so you know the whole nice. thing or whatever. Thanks. Yeah, it's called Dup It. Um, but I'm gonna uh, totally check that out. Please, I would love it if you did. I'd, I'd be thrilled. That'd be like enough. I don't need to. But so, <laughs> so uh, Jim Jim Henson's company saw it, and they had me fly out there, and oh. uh, we were we were in talks, and everything was good, and I wanted to make it into a series, and I wrote out the first thing and the first two seasons, and then COVID, <sighs> and so now I'm just like, and we've been talking, and the funny thing is, is that they haven't said no which i'm hanging on to for dear life but they right. also like because everything's paused they're not saying anything right so i'm just like great cool yeah i don't know what i else think to, it's gonna do it even better because i feel like everybody's been through more of like the anxiety and depression and all those mm -hmm. manifestations are so there true the only problem it's, is yeah i would say try and get megan involved yeah, that's but true. i feel like she's <laughs> Susie sunshine i don't think she oh, has i can, I can be a goddamn <laughs> bitch come on for fuck's sake. <laughs> you mentioned I the Irish whiskey this. before. That's right. <laughs> I would love it. We had uh, we had Bobby Costanzo on a couple weeks ago, and he wanted to play my dad. So you, that would be great. We we get your role in it, no problem. Oh my gosh, I would be love amazing. to play your mom. I would be. Oh, let's let's do, I, it's done. We, I did a virtual handshake <laughs> with him. I'll do it with you. That'd be great. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, are you going? Oh God, is it? Are you going back out to? Do you feel safe enough to to travel? If anything, um, you yeah, know, I like because. Well, yes, oh, I have you been? To L I went to LA last week. Yes. yes. Oh wow. Yes. And I flew there to help a friend move, and oh, okay. um, and I came back and uh and yeah and I felt like How I was, had, was I was double masked on the plane. Okay. Um, cause that's what people told me to do. So I did, I do right. what my told and, um, <laughs> and, uh, and I helped my friend and I, man, I, I worked my ass off for her. I, she nice. knows it. She, yeah, and, yeah. And it's all good. But, um, <clears throat> and in LA, it's a much different, uh, environment than it is in Texas. Um, and, I mean, right. in the stores, everybody wears one in the store, but anybody outside is not wearing a mask. Pretty That's much. what my my buddy told me the same thing too. They're like not outside. You don't see people yeah. in them at all. I but like, they are in Texas. I what? But they are wearing them in Texas. No, oh, yeah, I don't think so. but they wear them in oh, the stores. Are? In the wow. stores. All oh, right, but not outside. Not outside. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Not outside. Yeah, I feel like it's getting like that over here too. Like every time yeah. I'm out, I'm out doing whatever. I don't see anybody in them and. I mean, right. I, I feel like liberated because I'm fully vaccinated now. So I'm like, I'm licking people and 
I can't be stopped. It's all. You can it's still it's, get it. You can I know, still get true. it. I know that's true. Oh, go on. <laughs> yeah, we're going back out. Um, there, you know, um, Asbury Park is like a huge. It's like a huge music scene. You know, Bruce Springsteen, yeah. Stone Pony. Right. So this, um, you know, I did a uh, Asbury Aid benefit for the Jersey Shore artists at the awesome. Stone Pony. It was my first time back out, and I was. <laughs> like it was it was a small thing because the bands that did it that all uh, did it they they recorded theirs virtually so they ran the live stream of the band and then in between they would have like you know uh public figures from new jersey and i'm trying to figure out what to call myself without that sounding like a douche uh <laughs> but like <laughs> me the governor you know harlan coben's a jersey author so just jersey people like it was a Got weird it. eclectic bunch then there was like i never thought i would see my name next to the governors and a senator of new jersey unless right. i was being arrested right, or like right. you know and i'm like <laughs> Are we this sending a weird. large check? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But when I got there, it took me a second to adjust to like the the everybody was being cool and you know social distance or whatever, and they had like I guess the crew of the Stone Pony was allowed to sit at tables like all the younger people that were kind of helping put this together, and then there was the technical crew, and then there was me in the corner, and I was just sitting at the bar, and every now and then the owner would come be like. Hey, you know, we got sandwiches, help yourself to whatever. And I'd be like, oh, yes, thank you, whatever. And then I just, just stay in the corner oh. until I had to go up. And then finally, about an hour, like once I had like actually done my little spot, I kind of eased into it. And they were like, Are you all right? And I was like, I'm I'm fine. I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, right. like, like I haven't I don't been know how to people. Be. Yeah. I'm freaking I, out on the inside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I didn't even, I don't even know if I realized I was, I set myself aside because they were kept going like, you can come closer. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm, good. Good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know. Did you have your mask yeah. on? I did. Yeah. I had my mask on and uh, I wore it up until I got on onto the stage and then took it sure. off to do the little spiel, my little shtick. And then, um, and then, yeah, and then put it back on and that was it. And then I grabbed food and left like a creep. <laughs> like a like a typical actor. <laughs> Wait, let me put something in my pocket. I got I got bigger pockets. I should wear bigger I pockets did, to this game. <laughs> <laughs> it was so the owner it was like it's it's the, the the owner of the stone pony was super super nice but she was also like my mother she was like because i took a rap and then she was like take more to go you look hungry like you look like you're hungry and i was like no but thank you i'm taking a plate around <laughs> driving in the car e eating it at the same time oh my God. it made me feel like i was back on a set somewhere doing whatever right i would what's that have you ever still what have you ever stolen stuff from uh from a set mine besides food <laughs> I want to know. I like I to know. I, you know. I like I, to know who's <laughs> what people are get, taking. I usually get stuff given to me. Ooh, oh, well, that's I work so much a, better than what I do. <laughs> <laughs> That'd I be don't great steal. if you were like, I actually took Terry Elwes and he just pulled him in the <laughs> frame and he's just like in a glass I, case. Oh <laughs> get back in the cage, Terry. Get back in the cage. <laughs> you just turn the camera and he's like minute. just get back in the cage <laughs> oh my god that's great <laughs> oh fuck I can't oh. that made my whole night <laughs> <laughs> oh my so god. what have you been get, what, what's like something that you've been given that you've kept uh, held on to okay so I had a um, when I did uh, I did an Amish movie uh, with Kirstie Alley and Tim Allen oh my god that's right Tim Allen I love that movie yeah. for Richard Poor. I yeah. fucking knew it I, I, I knew. That. Sorry, hold on a second. I am losing my mind because I knew. That I so I feel such like such a jackass that I forgot that. But don't worry um, about it. It's no, fine. but it was because it's cause we're talking about Robin Hood Men in Tights, and I was about to say to you, I know you've done that accent before, but I was like, no, John, you're imagining things. But it was almost the same thing, right? It was similar. It was. Very it was. Similar. They were very similar. Yes. Okay, I love German. for Richard Poor. Yeah, fucking <laughs> so good. So oh. so. In that Kills movie, um, uh, we had this, um, you know, this great uh, set of our house, um, mm -hmm. with the Amish house, and we had these beautiful old, um, like uh, lamps. They were like oil lamps, but, um, and they gave me one of those. Uh, oh, nice! Yeah, it was really nice. And I'm, I'm trying to think if I've ever stolen anything. I <laughs> don't think I've stolen. I just get to, people give me stuff. Like for the That's longest the time, I never ever shopped for clothes because the wardrobe people would be like just take this just take this just take oh, that just take that wow. and i was like okay thank you so much nice or could i buy this i would love to buy this we'll see. Let, let's see let's see oh that's so you know? th that's a good that's a good way to do it and i would have bought it I, buy, yeah you know yeah yeah I same oh, yeah you gotta yeah, 
Yeah. I, oh, that's so great. Know, so I get a wardrobe made for me. <laughs> That's that's yeah. freaking great. Yeah, yeah. Joanne, like we would take uh st dumb stuff from like um clubs, like comedy clubs or whatever. Like so, I have okay. like uh I have the no. Oh God, there was a um, there was a there was a a button, an on. Oh, this is gonna sound shitty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you still have time. You don't have to tell it. You don't have to tell it. You still have time. <laughs> Megan's like mental note. Do not invite John over my house. <laughs> no, I would never. I, like, I, I would never. Catholic. It's like, don't tell me. No, I'm I, no, I, I grew up. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Uh, that's what I was like. My brain's like, maybe not. No, this is fine. So there's a, this club's out of business anyway, as far as I know. Okay. So there there's like, uh, yeah. But there was a there was an uh, autism awareness pin on the ceiling <laughs> of it. I don't know who's stuck. I know it's getting better. But I listen. But I've done a lot. <laughs> I, I didn't think this club fucking sucked. Let me just tell you right now. I didn't think they they didn't deserve to have it, right? This is this is uh <laughs> this was pure just you know fresh oh music. So but I and I'm short. I'm like five four, I'm Keebler elf size, you know what I mean? Oh. So like I just I stood on a thing and like ripped it off and I still have it and I love this thing. It's like a yes. little uh yeah. You you gave it a good home. Thank you. See, good Tom, what are you talking about? <laughs> I <laughs> I'm That's how you put a nice spin, spin on it. something. <laughs> on, like, <laughs> Megan is an enabler. <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. This guy, it was a, I, this this is like one of the, the the one of the other things I remember about this club too is they used to have you would go into the green room which was a totally it was like a, a box that you were in anyway because nobody gives a shit about comics so you're in this room <laughs> you know you're, they're making you order off the kids menu because some comic from the 80s ordered too many steaks one night so they're like and now you get uh, fish sticks so I'm <laughs> I'm, oh I'm in the I'm in the room or whatever and it's James Dean um uh God Elvis um you know another somebody else on the on the wall like a couple guys like a couple of those celebrities or whatever and then there's a mirror and i was like what the what, what that, this what an odd pattern and it was right before you went on stage and then uh somebody was like you want to know why and it's like because all these people died and you're next <laughs> before you got there and i was like what oh. the and like i remember that to this day I like, like oh, james dean elvis elvis um, John Lennon, yeah, you know, <laughs> Lennon, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, exact job. Like anybody that was like, and I was like, oh wow, these are all great. And then you just see yourself, and I was like, oh, that's, that's mean, up. wow, that's right? Mean. Yeah, and I was like, oh, and it was right this before you I walk never on. Did stand up. I, I just, I thought, I, I can't, I can't be out there alone. I need somebody else to help me save my ass. Like, we need, I need a rapport. I need, I need somebody yeah. else. I can, which is why I did improv and not stand up. I did, right. I tried to do stand up once. Mm -hmm. And I, I, somebody tried to heckle me and oh. I, I oh. took the microphone and I went down to this, like, I just was like, you come up here and try to do this yourself, you fucking ass. And I thought, this is not for me. This is not for me. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, that's the best heckle response I've ever heard though. That was beautiful. <laughs> I might actually try that. Dude, if you see me. <laughs> please, you could say, Megan Kavanaugh. Marla Hooch, a nice old old Marla Hooch. This is what she did. <laughs> fuck you, you motherfucker! I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh shit! Oh, that's the best. God damn! I love that you tried it though. That's no. I did. But my, my, most people won't do it. Most people won't do it. Now I tried. I to, I, want it. Now I'd like. To. You should. Oh, you let's do it together. Want... We'll go on tour together. Wow! I won't take really? anything while we're on tour together. <laughs> I won't. I, I won't swear. either. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be way funnier if you did take things and be like Megan Kavanaugh. Sticky fingers, guys. She's a club. No, I don't know what to tell you. Just putting stuff in your purse. I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. god. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a, that'd be a blast. There's a there was an improv theater in uh, Boston that I used to do that closed down due to the pandemic. But it was uh, I used to love it because they were super friendly to stand ups, which I don't know if it was like that, like when you started, or if there was a cross between the improv and the stand up people and uh, oh, or whatever. Sorry. But they were like super friendly, so like stand ups could come and you know we could work out material and stuff like that there. And I I went a couple times and they asked me to come on stage with them to do uh, improv, and it was a blast. But it was like a rush i i was not used to being on stage with so many people right same time and they are so good yeah. and so fast and it was a it was a whole different 
from being on from spending years on stage alone because i never even yeah. did theater like so i never did any acting like on stage right. or anything like that either um but then having those guys it, i felt like i had to remind myself i was on stage because i was watching everybody i was like they're great <laughs> right <laughs> like look at them go oh my god like, that, you know stage. I had the opportunity when I did Second City, I mm -hmm. was in the touring company and then I got bumped up. This all happened in LA. I wasn't in Chicago for this. And it okay. was Ryan Stiles, um, oh. Richard Kind, um, you know, mm. like this this cast was amazing. Oh my God. And they God. were so funny. And I would do that. I would just watch them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm in this. Uh, yeah. I went to, one time Ryan Stiles talked me into getting stoned. And um, I don't ever get high when I when I perform because I want to really I want to be like yeah. you know okay. And he talked me into he's like, come on, our theater's closing. The, the, the theater that we were in in Santa Monica was closing, mm -hmm. and um and I was like, okay, okay. So we go out, we get stoned. We're gonna do this before the improv set. We've already done the show. I'm like, okay, whatever. I come mm -hmm. back and they go, you guys, Robin Williams is doing the set with us. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can't think like oh my God. so I came out with this big hat with had like dingle balls all along it <laughs> and I just tried to hide I was trying to hide and right off the, this is right when dead poets came out this is how oh. old it was and and they go we take you to a classroom in Santa Monica and everybody in the cast has done characters you know that this is a, a kind of a, a, a one that they're like working on that everybody's right, working right. on and they've done characters I hadn't right so I'm with them oh. and I'm sitting there and he goes Madam Sombrero, give us a poem. <laughs> I was like, the butterfly gently flies, da -da 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 -da, you know, through the, and I do this, and then, and then it goes, start over. I have no idea what I've said. And he said, why do you stare at me like a deer in front of a Peterbilt going, who? Hmm. And if I had been in the moment and had been truthful, which is what they tell you to do, I should have said, because I'm stoned, it would have been huge. Yeah. And I was just like, my brain was like, what do I say? I don't know what to say. Oh my God, I don't know what to say. Like, oh, this is the worst. Is the Holy worst. shit. And you know what? Wow. I have that on tape. VHS, oh, no way. baby. Wow. Oh, you gotta, you gotta get that on YouTube or something somehow. That's yes. fucking genius. Oh, that would blow up if you did that. You gotta try to figure out how to, how to, how to transfer it so over. old. Oh. Also, oh, but it's. I mean, Dead Poets Society, that you probably were born. <laughs> I was born in when did that come? I was born in eighty four. So whenever oh, okay, that came out, it came out yeah. like, like in the early nineties. Eighty seven. Oh, oh yeah, right. Ninety one, right ninety two, something yeah, like that. Somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's crazy. Great. Yeah, yeah, that's a great. I love Ryan Styles and Richard oh, Kind. Those guys. Do you? Ryan Styles. God, he's so oh fucking funny. He he had this. Um, he would play a parking bump, and like he just <laughs> his mind would go like, you know, you know those commercials that they show where um. The people are, uh, they're like, uh, oh, I he used to do this sketch where they were laying against the wall of the, of the theater and they, but it was as mm -hmm. if you were watching from above. Okay. So okay. Oh, like, like speed getting, bumps. Like, yeah. Getting in and out of their, of their sleeping bags, but they were like upright, but they were right. pretending like they were laying down. I mean, he came up with that. Like he's oh. brilliant. His brain was just like, whoa, like. Where are you going? Like That's I'm incredible. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. I'm He's afraid so, my phone's gonna die. And I oh, to, okay. can I take my headphones out and plug it in? I can still yeah, talk absolutely. To you can I absolutely take your headphones. I don't yeah, know please. if it'll work, but yeah, it'll de see. it'll definitely charge while it's um while it while you're uh, while you're on here too. Yeah. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, I am loving this. Right. Yeah, this is so great. Is that okay? So is sound okay now? Yeah, yeah. It sounds fine. Oh, you sound you're okay. Oh, good. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, he um. It was, uh, I, I'd start again, it was the beginning of the pandemic. So everybody's bored. Nobody's, everybody's at home. Nobody's doing anything. Right. And I was watching Star Trek with a buddy of mine and, uh, I'd never really gotten into Star Trek, but it was my first time watching or whatever. And I'm watching the background of the cast and Diedrich Bader was on one of the episodes. Oh, yeah. So I, so uh, just for the hell of it, because I was like, I was loving Star Trek and, uh, getting into all the, all the characters or whatever. And it was next gen. So I just screenshot it and I said, holy fuck, is that a young Diedrich Bader? And I tweeted it. Forgot about it. Diedrich finds it, <laughs> retweets it, and he's like, yes, it is. And that's also a young whatever. Then Brent Spiner starts commenting on it. And it turns into this thing where all the Star Trek people are now and Diedrich Bader. And then Ryan Stiles chimes in 
and starts shitting on Drew Carey, who then replies. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just the best entertainer. Wow. I'm just, I, I, I like sat back and like, but Ryan, yeah, Ryan, when Ryan started chiming in, it was just ridiculous fun. And he seemed like such yes. a cool dude. Oh my God. Yeah. And I was like, but I was like, he's so funny. Yeah. And and I was I was so lucky to work with those guys. Like I I, I was an understudy. I came in from the touring company because um uh Deb Faker left. And um yeah, it was she's in all those um she's in a lot of the Christopher Guest movies, Deb Thaker. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and uh yeah, it was it was I, I god, the the career when I think back to all of these old stories, like it just I've had, I've been so lucky. I just feel so blessed to have been to have been um, part of everything, all of it. You know, to yeah, been able to do all of it. That's incredible. You can. I mean, whenever, whenever you. I mean, are you, good, you thinking about writing a book or anything like that? Because yeah, not I've to put writing, pressure on you, but I've been writing a book for about ten years. Whoa! Oh, nice. Oh, whoa! Oh, I just yeah. died. <laughs> <laughs> it's a red light. My red battery died. <laughs> that was such a flash of whatever we were like, like, like everyone just kind of froze oh my god i look completely 90 now <laughs> my light, my light. everyone turn off their ring lights and solid i just start ripping shit off the wall <laughs> tvs <laughs> this is a wig i just pull my hair off <laughs> I don't know what happened. Oh God, that is just, just, I don't <laughs> it's know. It's got to be plugged in. Yeah, it's got. Yeah, it's probably just not plugged in, unless it exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Did it, the in? Japanese satellite again. <laughs> I think I have to. Um, it's out to get us all. I don't. You know what? I don't know enough about the ring light. I haven't learned much. That I, I'm working on my boots. I understand. I back to my. <laughs> can't keep up. Do you know? Um. Do you, do, do you know the Fanatic Salon in uh, Los Angeles? The who? The uh, it's called the Fanatic Salon. I've never heard of it. It's them. okay. So Jane Morris and Jeff Molchalski. I love Jane and Jeff. Me too. So they were okay. Oh, this is gonna be great. So they run a place called the Fanatic Salon, and it's like an improv theater, little, very small. Okay. And when I moved out to LA, because you know, you know my manager, Bill. Yes. Yes. With spotlight. He was with Spotlight back Okay, in the so I don't remember exactly how, but you... Right. Oh, that's right, Spotlight, yeah. So yeah. Bill knows Jane and Jeff for a long time because he worked with them. Like, he actually did improv, I think, with them. And so when I got out to L.A., he was very much like... He just kept having me meet with people. <laughs> like, like to be like, they'll take care... Like, when you get to... Because when I moved to L.A., I moved with, like... I had uh, a few network meetings and some projects to pitch. And then, like, an idiot, I was like, I'm going to just stay out here. That was dumb. Uh, <laughs> but I, like, you know... Was it? I, well, no... No, oh, it was beneficial, but at the time, I thought I was really like it was a little. It was it was weird because I didn't know anybody. You know what I mean? So I literally just just left. And even stand up wise, like I mean, it didn't take me long to get at the comedy store in the Ice House and stuff. But like, it was when I think about it now, I'm like, I can't believe I just I just fucking left everything and went to L.A. Right. So, right. Um, but he, you know, he had me meet with Jane and Jeff, and they were super nice, and they let me do stand up at their place. But of course, then you know, I do my set and. Uh, they, uh, it, it was George went, uh, uh, Bernadette was there. Um, Rick Overton. Yes. Um, and I was just like, why am I he like, <laughs> like I was like, but I've same, like, I just couldn't believe it, but I figured you must have known. I, I figured you must know I, Jane and Jeff. Guys, yeah. I, I, I worked with a lot of John, Jane and, um, um, they had a theater called the upfront theater. Okay. Um, and this was before the, 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 we had a big earthquake, I think in like 93 and it oh, toasted wow. that theater. And I had wow, wow. A, um, a, a fundraiser at my house in Toluca Lake um, and through a giant fundraiser for that theater. For, Cause wow. that's where most of my, my improv back then okay. was there. Huh. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. They were, they were super, super nice. And that was another, that was another experience. I, I just watched all those guys go up and do improv. I didn't realize they got together. That was another thing that made me like almost somewhat envious of like the improv crowd is like they, all those people just randomly got together to just do improv because they enjoyed each other's company. And if people were coming to watch, it's like, I think for like regular people to come, regular people, look at me uh, for regular <laughs> people to, uh, but you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> but there was like they were like just only charging like five bucks and then they got to watch all these people play okay. and 
It, it was it was it was phenomenal. Yeah, Jane. Happened. I still talk to Jane. There was an older group. So Jeff and Jane were just a little bit older than I was, <clears throat> but mm -hmm. there was a group older than them, like Edie McClurg and uh, Fred Willard, mm -hmm. and like you know, like oh. that age group was. Yeah. Was, they would do stuff, <clears throat> and um, I would watch them. Yeah, it was. It's. Who was your class? What do you mean in college? In, no, no, no. In like in in improv. Like, did oh. you come? Like, who were the guy? Who were the people that you were see, came up oh, with? It was, me, it was me and Andy Dick and oh wow, uh, Mark DiCarlo and um, okay. Uh, well, Ryan Styles and all those guys were. I mean, I was I was I worked out with them. Dan Castellaneta, Homer. He's from oh Oakland. my god, he was there. He was at Jane's thing too. He, yeah. He he grew up in my hometown. And uh, we oh went to high school God. together. And um, he's what? A, yeah, he's a couple years <laughs> old. Crazy. Play one day. Um, <clears throat> let's see who else. Um, Molly Shannon. Uh, oh, nice. And um, I'm trying to think of you know, there's a lot of people that aren't names that that were wonderful. Right, right. Oh yeah, but even uh, yeah, you know, yeah. actors. But, but um, yeah, it was. Uh, that's cool. It was really cool. Really that's that's so incredible. I don't. That, I'm so seriously. Funny. I can't believe you're even on here. That's it's, it's so nice to have you on. I really. I'm just like, it's. Uh, I'm can't. I. I was like. I it was one of those things. Like we had booked you so far in advance that I was like starting to get. I kept talking to Bill, and I was like, maybe we should just have her on tomorrow because I maybe she might change her mind. <laughs> and like I'm like it's months away. I'm like, why are we letting her realize <laughs> what, she, what she signed up for? <laughs> <laughs> and you are funny. I, it's so funny because when I called you today, I called him earlier, like seven o'clock tonight. I'm like, hey, listen, um, I don't think I'm supposed to be talking to you on the phone, but I don't have a link. And you know what? <laughs> I did have the link. I went and looked in my my stupid account. I have I have I'm one of these people that has ninety one thousand emails. <laughs> <laughs> I lose stuff all the time. As you uh -huh. know. I just can't keep up. And um, I hear I you. You know? Oh, that's too funny. Everyone. Oh my god! I said well, it was I don't so want... funny that uh, I because he's always nervous of like he's like I don't know how this person's gonna be I don't know how this and you're the I think you're one of our first guests that he's like this is the nicest person ever oh, like yeah. she's so <laughs> sweet I'm like it would be great if he could she comes on here and she's really nasty <laughs> 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 that would have been hysterical like the one that he didn't worry about yeah <laughs> I, I really am I don't. I don't know why I, but like sometimes I get I, I get people on. I, I think I think again, like you said, it's just it's from a stand up background where I'm just like, you know, you meet some people that you can't wait to meet, and you're like, wow, that guy was a fucking asshole. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like when we have guests come on, sometimes I'm like, I don't know. I hope I hope they're okay or I hope they're cool. But yeah, you, when for you, I was like, she's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you were you were asking me earlier about Al Borland, and I wanted to tell you so. Oh yeah, Tim Allen. Um, and Kirsty are both, well, I'm going to get political. I shouldn't get political. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, you can do whatever you want. They're, they're oh, yeah. By politics. Let me put it right. that way. Same. And, um, and yet they were both, you know, I, uh, Kirsty was super sweet to me. So it was Tim. Tim put me on his show. Like, yeah. he liked me. He thought, get this, he thought that I was an actual Amish woman. And he heard me tell this joke that's my dad, that my dad and my uncle tell that's really nasty. And right. he heard me tell it and he was just like, like, who is this person? Who's this Wait. Amish woman, you know, telling this really bad joke? Like, just nasty. And you gotta tell the joke now, you know that, right? <laughs> what you, you gotta you tell the to joke tell now, you joke. know that, right? I don't know if I Please. Can All right. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. But it's a, it's a visual joke, so I don't know if I, I'll try and do it from here. Okay. So, sure. construction firm gets a lot of uh, flack because they haven't hired any women. And they make this one woman, they hire this one woman, and she's in charge of the pulley. And they're just all really pissed off. The fucking bitch, goddamn woman. So, she's, you know, her job is to take the tools out, put it on the pulley, and send it up to where they are. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, they're like, hey, screwdriver. So she puts the screwdriver up, she sends it up, and then they get up and they realize, oh, they're about the 10th floor, and they realize, ah, oh, I didn't teach her the signals. I need a hammer. And she looks up and goes, can you see what I'm doing? <laughs> and they go, he's like, God damn it, fucking woman doesn't understand anything. I need a hammer. She goes, <laughs> 
comes down and goes, don't you fucking understand anything? I need a hammer. She goes, I left it back in the box, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't see me. Do, you couldn't see me touching my box at all, so you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, right? That was so a great joke. I'm uh, telling this joke to some people. Uh, and he's just like, what is happening? Who is, who is this woman? <laughs> so I, that endeared him. He, he then felt uh, he wanted to, get to know me. And uh, we became friends. We were friends. And like he, you know, he went to the hospital. He, he had, a, one time he was in the hospital and he called me from the hospital. Like we were pals. So that's awesome. Yeah. And then um, because I'm an idiot and I feel like I, um, I don't want to bother people. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was not a great like I would be great if you called me but I would never call him you know like that kind of uh, and um uh, so anyway so he ended up putting me on his basically he said you're gonna have to audition for the people but you know I think we could mm -hmm. do this we talked about it. we said well what if um so he put me I was a guest star on on an episode and I get bit by a rat uh, <laughs> there was a rat oh here's what it is I was a rat trainer here I am uh -huh. Right? I'm a trainer, <laughs> and I'm um, this rat is supposed to like run through the walls and wire the walls. Mm -hmm. Well, the rat that they hired, they only had one, and you, you know, first rule of, of working with animals, have another one just in case. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, this rat couldn't do this kind of wall because it had insulation, and there was no. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so they were like, we have to change this. What are we going to do? And I said, what if? What if Trudy, they let me like be in on the conversation. I said, I'm a guest star, right? I'm like, what yeah. if Trudy did this because she really just wanted to meet Al? <laughs> wow. And then I got myself a recurring character. I'm on for like, you know, seven episodes. Woo -hoo! Yep. Wow. <laughs> and I married Al on the very last episode of the show of Forever, for Home and right. Home Forever. I was, that was, I was on that. And my sister Lizzie played my maid of honor. Oh, oh my god. She, she works for United in labor relations. Like she's just not an actor at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, too bad you don't have somebody that looks just like you that could be your maid of honor. I said, actually. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, that's amazing. That's incredible. I, love, I, I grew up I'm watching the, the episode with my family. They're like, there's Lizzie. There's Lizzie. I'm like, I am getting married. <laughs> <laughs> the whole reason I got in this so that I would have the accolades, you fuckers. I'm getting married. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, god damn. Yeah. That's fucking hysterical. Yeah. Oh, shit. It. That's so, I love, I remember that show. So, that's one of the few shows I grew up, my whole family watched. We watched that whole, that from oh. beginning to end. We loved that show, and we remembered our, uh, when you got married because Al's such a great character. That's such yeah. a genius. All the characters on that show, even the, um, you know, Wilson, the guy with the the, the genius <laughs> thing about the fence and the thing, and I loved yeah. him, Alan. I know it's I'm the same. What you said, we're, our, I'm you and I. I'm sure our politics are exactly the same. Right. So I know what you mean. But I also feel like Tim's Tim's a you know he's a great guy. Like I've seen, I've never yeah. met him before. I, I knew people who worked for his show writing. Oh. It was, my mom was uh, coming you, in. Uh, hi, you can say hi if you oh. want. Absolutely. Hi. Yeah, please. Hi. Oh. <laughs> say hi to the guys. Say hi to the guys. She's in pants. It's okay. Oh, oh, that's fine. Me, too. I'm not wearing pants. Hi. Hi, hi sweet. How are you? Hi. How are you? Thanks. Beautiful. Are you enjoying? <laughs> you look incredible. I'm yes. Yeah. She does. Absolutely. Thank you. I love you. Incre Good night. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Sweet dreams. I barely walk around now and I'm nowhere near 90. Like <laughs> I'm like that's incredible. I love it. She is her Beautiful. brain is so much better than mine. She remembers. <laughs> I'm not kidding. She, mm. She's wicked wicked smart and like remembers everything. Yeah. But My friend's grandmother <laughs> just turned 95 and she is she travels. She she goes wherever she wants. Um, you know, I don't know why I just said she goes wherever she wants. Like they're not supposed to. Be able to. <laughs> <laughs> they're just letting her out of the house. <laughs> oh, oh. oh willy nilly, you know, crossword puzzles, uh, Sudoku, um, yeah, yeah, answering yeah. questions on Jeopardy. <laughs> There's no. I'm like, I, I got none of that. Good genes. Megan's lucky. 
I know. I'm really lucky. My mom yeah. does book groups and she's Ooh. academic and she does all this stuff and she's, you know, the galleries and the art and she just remembers everybody's name and reads the New Yorker and time. Oh, that guy makes me sweat. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about it. Oh my God. That's so, that's fucking great. I I'm it. so, so I gotta, I always do this because I, and Tom, I, I, Tom will figure out a way to smooth transition this. You've been on for an hour and 20. I don't want to keep you any longer than you, than you have been 20 minutes over. So if you want to talk, we'll keep talking. If you want to, if you got an out, I always, Listen, I, I'm like, I got nothing going on. I got fantastic. <laughs> Let's I never leave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hang out till your, all your lights go out. Uh, <laughs> the wall starts. <laughs> <laughs> the walls start crumbling <laughs> <laughs> that's it oh my god that's so great Love that's you. see that's the thing uh, like like i i don't know i never i love all comedians and actors and stuff like that and i feel like people take take shit too seriously sometimes like i like they uh, tim allen was just on uh with mark Marin, um doing a podcast or whatever I love Mark Marin. I listen to the, it's like one of my favorite podcasts. So I listen to that. I love Tim Allen. I'm listening to the whole thing. Great interview. Good stuff. Clear, concise, funny, yada, yada. <laughs> to cut to like 24 hours later. And it's a trending topic on Twitter where it's like, Tim Allen said, and I'm like, half of me is like, I listened to that interview. I don't think he said any of that. Like, you know what I mean? We're like, it's, we're sometimes I'm just like, that's just a, you know, he's, uh, he's just your typical 80s comic, comic from the 80s wants to hold on to his money and, uh, you know, isn't it? Or, you know, just whatever. So it's just weird to me. <laughs> you know, I, I really feel like it's really important for us as humans to be able to have differing opinions and be able to still be in the same room with each other. Like, right. And Agreed. we're fucked. This, yep. Where this, this country and this planet is fucked if we can't do that. Yep. So, Agreed. Not, believe me, I was not of this mindset before I moved to Texas. But since I've been here... Um, there, you know, I have friends who do not share the same political beliefs, but we can talk about it. We can talk yes. about it, which is, you know, without it getting crazy and, you know, I'm mm -hmm. going to never talk to you again. And you're, you know, you're a fascist, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hitler, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah the the internet's the only place you can't do that. <laughs> like, it's That's so no. weird. Like, I, I just, I said something to somebody the other day where I was like, I just want to get a shirt just to cut to the chase that just says, I love Roseanne. Tim Allen's great. You know, uh, I, I don't mind uh, this person or that, you know, and just get it over with. Because yeah, I yeah. just, you know. You know, uh, it, I, oh my God, that's another thing. I did a, I did an episode of Roseanne that was so different and so, okay, so I get this really? phone call. This is like 19, I don't know the year, 90 something. Mm -hmm. I get this phone call. Megan, the, the Roseanne, uh, um, the show wants you to come on because they can't get Sharon Stone. Wow. <laughs> when you think of Sharon Stone, you think of me. <laughs> I was like, what? And they said, Sharon Stone bought um, at some, like, uh, uh, you know, event. She bought a, a part on Roseanne as a, right. as a you know, whatever. And she can't, doesn't have time to film it. Oh. And they really want... Um, the audience, so they need somebody to film it in front of the audience, and they'll give you the tape, and they'll pay you top of show, and all this, but you won't air. And I was like, I don't care. What? Yeah. yeah. So I came and I did, I did the episode, and then she came in later with the cast with no audience, and they used wow. my laugh track, and they did it. And so she was this trailer park um, gal who. Mm -hmm. she trailer park and and it was really fun. and then Roseanne felt so bad about this that she created another character with me and her ex-husband her her true ex-husband in real life we, we were alien watchers you know mm -hmm. I see them <laughs> they came here <laughs> and, and that got caught because Sharon Stone's part took too long like it was like gosh so, so they brought me oh my another. god different part because they just felt so bad that i that i and i was wow. like you guys like this is you know so i have an episode that i did yeah. because i did these other episodes they brought me in for another one and had me play a part wow. that's but, incredible yeah that was roseanne that was that yeah was roseanne these are yeah, such it, great tidbits right like things that we really never would have known like you can't even find yeah. them anywhere and i right. think yeah. yeah that's so crazy to me because like i know that's another thing too is like they 
I do have memory. This is uh, God. I got to work on my sentence structure tonight. I don't know what's going on. Maybe these, are, <laughs> these yeah. could all these could all be my last words. I have no idea because I was about <laughs> what I what I was about to say was I have memories of you from when I was a child, and then I was like, John, don't say that in that oh. way. But I do like like of like shows of like stuff that you had been in or whatever. So that's that's incredible because uh you know that was another i i it's quite a big age difference here it's okay for you to say that no i no <laughs> i just meant like that's like you're not a relative of mine but i you know what i mean like i could have been like oh, a way i could have said like <laughs> <laughs> we could go on that show where they where they do people's uh family histories or whatever and they <laughs> flip the page and it's I, you know what i'm a little skeptical about on that show it's always someone flattering it's never like Tom Hanks. You're related to Goebbels. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and he's like, the fuck? What the hell? So he's like Lincoln for Tom Hanks. Like, really? He's got to be that much better than everybody else already. Uh, <laughs> everybody already loves Tom Hanks. Got to be related to Lincoln. Um, right. Yeah. Oh, it's a bummer. But yeah, that's the thing. I love like Roseanne was another show that I loved, too. And I, I thought she got a raw deal on, uh, you know, the one that got brought back. Because, you know, these reboots, like, I feel like a lot of these reboots, the they don't get a chance to get the original writers back on, you know? So, but they, but Roseanne did. And I feel like they developed those, you know what I mean? Like they knew where the characters left off. Right. And then when they brought it back, it was kind of like, um, they actually acknowledged that they got older, that stuff changed, you know right. what I mean? And the characters changed. So that was kind of cool. And then of course, you know, whatever happened, happened and they, they booted. I just don't understand how like, um, it, it, you know what I couldn't wrap my head around is that like for 20 years, you know, uh, like uh, she cultivated her stand-up act and then put everything into her TV show that was her. And then the bit, you know, the network decided this is no, I, it felt weird that to go like, this is no longer yours, even though it wouldn't have existed without right. her. Right. That yeah. fucked me up yeah. in a way that I was like, wow, that is messed yeah. up. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like, yeah, uh, that's, that that's pretty messed up. That's yeah. like, but that's like, you know, when, um, uh, um, Paul McCartney was talking to uh, Michael Jackson and Michael saying, how do you make money in the business? Oh, well, you just own, you know, um, content. And then he went and bought all the Beatles shit. It's like, <laughs> 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 I didn't mean that stuff. Yeah. yeah. How wild is that? <laughs> I, yeah, it is. When so. I first heard that story, I was like, oh, holy <laughs> shit. And then I was like, oh. and then he gave them to him, right? And they're like, no, he fucking kept them. <laughs> I, I, I could not believe that story when I heard it. I was like, "How? You know? Do you want me to bend over? Do I get Vaseline? Like, fuck you!" <laughs> I know. It and they had just worked together on like a couple right. songs or some shit. He was giving him like sage advice on how to make money in the business, and then he yeah. tripped him. <laughs> oh God! Fucking wild. Yeah. I can't. I mean, the games. Uh, that's that's the thing, though. Too is like the the high level stakes. It's like a constant game of Jenga when you're operating at that level. Like I can't even imagine. Yeah. Yeah. That's just fucking wild. Crazy. Did you uh, you ever see the, you ever hear the crazy stories about Prince that he would just? Yeah. That, I, I don't. You have one? No, I don't have any, but I've heard. Oh. Them. Oh yeah, yeah. I was. Gonna, I thought you had one. I was like, man. I was that, gonna be mind blown. Oh, I really, <laughs> so was I. Uh, I you just make one up now. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, those are like I. That's the kind of shit that I feel like is. Uh, I don't know. I kind of want like I kind of want like a timeline of events because I feel like these are just these are just too fucking weird. Like it, you know him showing up in a limo to beat uh, Eddie Murphy at basketball. You know, <laughs> like the whole like that kind of stuff is just weird. It's weird. It, it's just. I don't know. People are just eccentric and I love it. I love it. That's awesome. I feel like so you have such a positive energy. Like, do you, did you, have you always had that type of a vibe about you? Uh, whereas like, uh, do you feel like things are going to happen? Like before they even occur for you? Ooh. Yes, I do. I, you know, I'm, um, I, when I was younger, I, I yeah. Yes, I'm gonna say yes. I, I I have I don't believe in religion. I'm not a religious person, mm -hmm. but I do believe in energy, and yeah. I do uh, energy work. And I'm um, I meditate every single day, and I'm like it just helps me be a you know a, have a clearer brain. <laughs> right, Is <that> possible. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and I'm I I really feel like I've been I've been a lucky person. Too, too. Yeah. Um, and you know I'm I'm. 
I've, I love my life. I fucking love yeah. my life. I do. I, I just feel like I've been so lucky. I've had such a great career. I've got, got a great family. I love my parents. They're just kooky as shit. And I've got a whole bunch <laughs> of like stories that I want to, I want to do stand up about living with them. That's what I want. You do. should absolutely at some, it. any, anything, some kind of one woman show at the very least yeah. where you're oh. just, because all of the, everything you gave tonight and everything you're talking about and saying, man, if you don't put that together in a show, I'm going to have to play you. And that's nobody wants that. <laughs> <laughs> or Sharon Stone. <laughs> or Sharon Stone. Yeah. It's going to be a yeah. coin toss. Either one of us. Friends, Mark, so Mark DiCarlo is constantly, when's your show done? Are you done with your show? Have you been working on your show? I'm like, no. Come on. I got to get that show going. Let's, he's constantly, he's my huge cheerleader. He's just like, that's awesome. And for like a decade, he's been doing this. Like, come on, get it together. Put it together. <laughs> Everybody needs somebody like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you do that? You said you did meditation. Do you do the transcendental stuff that I keep hearing yeah. about? What? No, no of, of it, but I, I no, I do. I basically do. Um, Deepak Chopra has a. I just, oh, I love him. He mm -hmm. does yeah. little teachings, and then he has a meditation, and then I and then I do other stuff beyond that too. But but if I just am having a day where it's going to be crazy, I just I'll do just a quick one, and sometimes I'll do one at the end of the day too. But it depends. But I'm, you know, I I I. I feel like um i don't know how esoteric i want to get on your show here but no I it's fine yeah go for a, it that there's a lot to be said for not letting your mind run you you know and i think that you know laying in bed when your mind's like oh shit i got to do it oh yeah all that like i know? don't sleep at all so that's uh like in lying in bed like until like i'm out of complete exhaustion at a, a point of complete and total exhaustion that's when i like four or five o'clock in the morning is when oh. it finally just starts to like yeah. you know and then the whole day starts again uh and we could have we, we had a mindfulness event and we streamed oh. the film i did on amazon and we had a mindfulness expert kind of talk about meditation and all that other stuff and she was like you can just meditate when you're walking and i was like get the fuck out of here oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that. You know what? It's observing your thoughts. So like if you're laying there and you're thinking, I got to do this and, that, and then you go thought, that's a thought. It's kind of like, mm -hmm. it just goes, Oh, and then there's a mm. moment of nothing, just a second of nothing. And if you actually ask yourself, what's my next thought going to be? There'll be nothing just for a second. Ooh. And it, it's building up those sort of seconds of nothing. Mm -hmm. but that's able to make your mind rest and Ooh. it doesn't like own you. Right. Yeah. See, yeah, yeah. that's what I need. Cause I can't, I, I mean, I, there's too gonna, much. Uh... I'm going to get John a book. There's this book called pieces. Every step by Tish Nhat Han. It's uh -huh. a lot of Buddhist principles and yes. it's mm, such a good book. Somebody got it for me years and years ago. And it was like, you need to find the moments and just like right. washing the dishes or eating an, a piece of fruit and just right. to be in the moment. Cause we're yeah. always so far past the moment. Yes. Right. Oh my God. The, At, but that's, the, I, I stand up and eat. I don't like ever take, like, I'm usually just like eating and then like still doing the, like the next thing. And yeah, it's a, it's a, but I also like, I'm, you're hilarious. So at least that makes me feel like, cause I was always like, you know what, if I'm not this way, maybe I'll lose my creative ability. So I just suffer through. Right. Eckhart Tolle is another guy that's brilliant. And I've been oh, listening. Cool. I can't, sometimes I can't read his book because it's so, there's just so much. Mm -hmm. So I listen to it. I have a, 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 you know, an audio book that I listen to. And even then I can only do it in like small amounts because he's just really, it's, it's just, it's a lot. It's so simple, but it's a lot. Like, right. yeah. And he talks about how, um, how the brain, when your brain is doing that, how basically it's like being taken over by an entity. Like mm -hmm. you are not able to be yourself because your brain is working too hard. Firing. Fucking you up. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right? And, and, and yeah. so it's to like, let it be able to just rest, to have just even moments of just nothing. And, and that like right. your body, you, you need that. Your body needs that. Anyway. Yeah. yeah no, that's, I'm, I, I 100% agree. I feel like I remember a point in time where, I was like, I was talking to a buddy of mine and we were talking just about, you know, kind of getting older and, and doing whatever. Oh, and, but I was like, I don't remember a time anymore. You know what I mean? Like, like where I was like, I used to go to bed. I did. I used to go, all right, it's, you know, 10 or, or even if it was a little late, I like, I'm a night owl anyway and doing standard yeah. stuff. But like, you know, I was like, okay, I could go lie in bed. And I used to love winding down. I cannot for the light. I don't remember the last time I was able to wind down 
to go to bed. Mm-hmm. I just lie there. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, uh, I, my head hurt, you know, I can't stop thinking about shit or I get up a million times or, you know, phones here, think of something, you know, right. news, write it down or something pops up or whatever. And yeah. it's an, it's a vicious, dumb fucking cycle. Well, there's studies that say that if you don't get at least six hours of sleep, like they're, they're doing a lot of studies about this, that, that, mm-hmm. that, that is part of people. You could get dementia or, or oh, um, Alzheimer's. Fuck. Alzheimer's. So oh, like, well, that's just terrible. Six hours. six hours is the minimum. Yeah. All right. At least now, I, yeah, that's now good... you have me thinking about sleeping more. Thanks. I know. I was like, I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Am I going to get all? <laughs> <laughs> I thought like, she was going to yeah. do a whole bit like I'm you could get. Sad, sad. It's, <laughs> it's uh, what is it called? Uh... Oh, my God. You... But you know what's crazy? It's going to if she did that, I would have done the same thing I did with uh, we had uh, we had Art Alexiklis on the uh, lead singer of Everclear. And uh, I'd said something. That, oh, about LSD or right? he was talking about LSD doing LSD. And yeah. it, somebody said something about uh, or I asked him about like memory loss or whatever. And he went, what did you just say? But he was talking about like he was making a joke. But because we're on the Internet, I was like, what I said was uh, <laughs> he, he was like, it's a joke. I was joking because you said the memory loss thing, and I was like, "Like, aren't you a comedian?" I have, <laughs> not, yeah, I, I like I have nine times out of ten no connection. So, <laughs> oh my God. in person, hilarious. On this, no, yeah, I can't get it. Text <laughs> worst. All of that shit oh. is worst. It you is. Know, tone is everything, and it's like, no, you're missing my tone. Oh man. Yep. I, which is why I write, I feel like, I always feel like so fucking obnoxious. And like, I try to like, even when I'm emailing like, uh, you know, an agent or, or some publicist or whatever the hell it is, I'm like, I can't do it without doing this. I use exclamation points because I never want people to think I'm unenthusiastic or upset or that it's not a joke. So I'm just like, Hey, Karen, da 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 I do. do. Oh. I do. I do emojis until I have one person that says, "You don't do not do not communicate with me with emojis," and I'm like, "I don't know what to do." Like, so I have to use the colon <laughs> parentheses. <laughs> right? It's so it's it's lost all it's lost all it's lost all meaning. <laughs> it's just like. I've got, I mean, even friends I've known for like 20 something years now, we, because we're just so used to it. It's like, I don't want to upset you. You don't want to upset me. And then I'm just like, I know you too well. I don't care if you upset me. Right. <laughs> like, there, like there's not, but it's, it's that, it's a weird thing. There's no inflection. And like, even now, like I, I like to call people and I think that throws people the fuck off. I'm so glad you called me because <laughs> that like. I was like so relieved. Like I was actually on another. <laughs> I popped onto a friend's podcast, the the guy who showed before this or whatever, and I saw like a number coming in. And I was like, "Oh, hang on, click, click." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Just went off. But like, I love talking to people on the phone because you know, yeah, hear people's voices, and it's just. I had um uh I had this one band on from Australia. Love this new band. They're called the Middle Kids. So they're on their fourth album, whatever. But because they're in Australia. I was worried about the time difference and their publicist was um, like, okay, great. So we'll do um, there. She was like, they're 14 hours ahead. And I was like, okay, well, depending on what time we're doing, they're like the next day. Right. So we're doing that or whatever. She goes, well, let's just go by New York time and LA time. And the funny thing is, is that she fucked up the time between New York and LA. It's a three hour time difference. And she did two. So now I'm like emailing back and I'm like, okay, but if it's eight 30, so it'll be five 30, whatever. Right. And then she was like, no, uh, it's L.A. time, so it's 6. And I was like, mm. <laughs> So I'm like, <laughs> and I was like, can you just call? Let's just talk on the phone. And she's like, I don't see any reason to talk on the phone. And I was just like, please. Wow. Oh, come on. Yeah. She's really? like, I don't see any reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She wouldn't do it. So I had to like, that's why Tom, Tom knows, like, leading up to that one interview, I was like, I don't know if they're going to be here. I have no fucking idea because <laughs> there was no communication. But they were there. Yeah. Wow. Yes. I had I had to like make the out? graphic. What do you say? Did it work out? Oh, it worked yeah, out fine. It was excellent. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it was excellent. yeah. But thankfully, but I was like, I can't believe somebody refused to get on the, on the phone. I'm like, it takes two seconds. Weird. Yeah, it drives yeah. me crazy. I feel like we have an edge over uh, the last couple generations that came out because, like, I have, you know, they can't order pizza. Well, you know, they won't open the door. <laughs> yeah. 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 
No, I, yeah, I, I believe me. My, I have a son who is um, 28 mm-hmm. and his, he has, uh, his, so his dad and I, the one that, that I got pregnant, this is the kid that I got pregnant with doing League of the mm-hmm. Room. <laughs> He's it. But, <laughs> As opposed to the other kid. Right. That, that, you have one every movie, right? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be scary. <laughs> um, his dad's name is Todd and Todd okay. was married and had two little girls um, and um, I lived next door with my partner Anne. We lived next door to them and Brendan's mm-hmm. bedroom connected to both apartments. Okay. Oh, wow. So wow. That's I know. Cool. I really need to make it into a cartoon. Yes, I know absolutely. I do. I do. I know that I do. Anyway, um, and so Brendan talks about his little sisters because like they're 16 and like, like how that generation looks at stuff. Like that's the generation that's never grown up without a cell phone. Yeah. Like cell right. phones were it. And you know, yeah. there's no hanging up the phone. Why are you hanging up the phone? Right. Yes. Like, no slamming. Cause it's, cause it's on the yeah, wall. No. Right. Anyway, he talks about that yeah, generation. And I'm, you know, it's just, compl- I don't have very much interaction with, kids that young and i was right. just like yeah like it's a whole different world yeah it really is yeah. what they're like you know i've got cousins and stuff like that and my friends have well my friends kids are like really little my cousins are like older or whatever but because they grew up in front of the phone like they're so used to being on camera that it freaks me the fuck out oh wow like they they are so they're like they would talk to me about tiktok and stuff like that when it came out especially like because everybody was kind of jumping on during quarantine and make a TikTok videos. And I'm like, I don't like, unless there's something going on specifically that's specifically right. necessary for me to be on camera. I have no desire to like make a dance right. video or do whatever, but it's like second, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh dude, I don't ever want, nobody wants me to make a dance video. Uh, but like, you know, it's second nature to them. It's weird. Well, it's yeah. funny. Cause tonight when my, when I was at dinner and I said, I have to, I'm doing this interview thing tonight. You know, they were like, mm-hmm. Oh, my camera. And I'm like, no, it's just a phone call. And then I was like, Wait a minute, it's a podcast. <laughs> I saw pictures of people and I watched a little and I know that it is actually and then I was like, shit. Oh my <laughs> god. Make up on. I got to, you know. <laughs> oh, it's when when do, when you tell them wait, wait do you tell them that the podcast that the live uh version aired on Twitch. <laughs> They'll be like, you were on Twitch. I don't even know what Twitch is. Me it's neither. So Tom there you go. <laughs> so it's a platform that started out for gaming and then moved over towards. I saw a migration of musicians move over here, but it's pe- they're looking for content creators, and there's a really supportive group that a lot of our followers are from, like the UK and the Netherlands okay. and European Union, because they're more supportive of the arts than America is, sadly. Yeah. But and it's so funny yeah. that when once we cut cut across, we have a large. A, you get a global following and they're able to support you a little more than you're dealing with like that whole YouTube, Facebook algorithms that kind of squelch you because they want you to pay for advertisements. So it's just a, it's a friendlier environment, but I think it's a good spot for like content creators and comedians. What's funny is I never really dealt with improv too much till uh, buddy Fitzpatrick show where he does a lot of the improv stuff. Yeah. That's um, when I started appreciating people doing improv. I was like, and you yeah. probably know this kind of game too, because so I, I was on the show the other day, and um, Buddy Fitzpatrick is a stand-up, but he loves improv, and um, so he has a game that he and his friends would play at parties, but he brought it to the his own show, and it's basically um, so you have six, you, you every there's like a bunch of contestants, and then the first person starts off, and Buddy gives them a word, and you have sixty seconds to do whatever you want about that word. Okay. And then, so you can improvise, you know, come over their team or just kind of talk about it or whatever. And then the other people that are there are also allowed to interject and chime in in the 60 minutes and try to like, you know, mess you up a little bit or add to it or whatever. And then your, whoever goes last picks somebody else and then they just get a spontaneous word. The next part of that game, you move on, like you get points, but they're not real really, you know? So the next part is everybody gets a secret word. And you have to improvise. You have to, you're not allowed to tell people what the word is, but you have to describe it in a way, okay. you know, in a bit where everybody has to guess what it is. Okay. So mine was, mine was zoos. And I said, um, oh, what the fuck did I, I said something along the lines of like, uh, uh, oh, I said, I'm not a fan of the, uh, the abuse or the, um, 
Oh my God. What is something along the same line? Like the abuse. Of the, I said, I'm not a fan of the abuse of the mistreatment. And I said, but where else are you going to find a place with better wingmen? Because uh, they literally will throw you in a cage with somebody else and go, you don't come out till you fuck. And then, uh, <laughs> and everyone was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> or whatever. And then when they said zoos, they were like, oh, so that was my, that was my clues. It's so funny. When you said zoos, I thought of Zuzu's pedals. I would have been like, <laughs> well, I, I know I hate <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's so great i wouldn't even, I didn't even think of that oh that's hilarious yeah so it's a really fun game though yeah it sounds fun yeah oh my god making me miss improv you got to come and do it we got to do we'll do it if I you want we'll do it together if you want to come back and get on that show and do it together that'd be hilarious i would love i will do anything with you i am now a fan oh oh that, that's so sweet thank you so much yeah then we'll totally <laughs> do it together <laughs> Two hours. I'm like. I know. I know. I'm. And it's I'm, flying I'm, by. It is. Best friend. That's. Oh, I mean, so oh, that's so fucking awesome. I'm, excuse me. I'm gonna go talk to my. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to myself in the mirror. Like you got this, buddy. <laughs> you got your best friend now. You go out there. <laughs> talk to myself. Oh my god, that's so great. I have a question about Twitch. Yeah. Sure. Shoot. So do I go to the app store on my phone to get it? Like, how do I? Yeah. You could you well, can get you can do you it online or you could go to your app store. Okay. So with this, like we go live, we go live on Twitch and then we we're on YouTube and all like the Apple Podcasts, Spotify. This is a good plug because this is exactly what we should be doing on the dystopia yeah. tonight. <laughs> so <laughs> you can catch all the episodes. Like, but it's only stays up there for 14 days. So it's really just so people get a chance to engage and be part of that's what I like about like you you'll find other improv groups on there, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So it like it's funny because comedians haven't really mo made their way across yet, but we kind of are pioneering it. So we did an 89 hour uh, charity special, right? Where we raised money, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for the Children's Brain Tumor Foundation, Excellent. And star treatments, yeah, and star treatments. So we did 89 hours, and 230 stand up comedians came on. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it was super fun, and we didn't we we did more of this where it was more like behind. It's like Sitting at the comedian's table, just chatting and, and talking yeah. and getting to know each other more than it was stand up. And every so often, somebody would get up and do a bit for, you know, a couple minutes. Right. And then, yeah, we raised some good money. Yeah. We went for a Guinness record. It was really it was really a fun time. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. that was the beginning of this. And the journey. coolest thing was is nobody realized how much they like we were doing it for the, you know, to raise money. And then at the same time, all these comedians had come on and we didn't realize how much we all missed each other, needed that camaraderie, oh. like because it wound up being like the biggest green room backstage hang because, you know, it, we thought it was going to be like yeah. people come on and then they leave. But people had that link, like the link I sent you, they kept coming back. So all night oh. people would pop on, yeah. you know, for eight. We were on for like 90 hours. So people were like, hey, how's it going? Is everybody anybody who's awake? Who's on? And, you know, it's who's great. talking to who? Yeah. Oh, so much fun. Oh, I love that. By any chance, did you ever work with Rob Bartlett? That Bob I feel like. Bartlett. He was yeah, part of an improv be... group with Eddie Murphy, the identical triplets. It was Eddie Murphy, him. What, what's the third? I, I feel so vague. I uh, never remember. Ja uh, Jackie, the joke man. I don't Mart think so, Rob. Wait, was it Jackie Martling? Or no, was it, it wasn't jo Jackie. It was another one. But he was yeah. in some of the things, but I can't, yeah, I can't remember the. Um, He's done, he did. He was, he was probably most well known for being on with Imus every day. That was like, he was the comedian on Imus. And he was, he has a lot yeah, of really all the... fun, like credits to him, too. He, but he, he does impressions funny. and stuff like that too. But he was on Broadway with Daniel Radcliffe in, um, oh my yeah. God, um, some bit, I can't think of the name of the, something with business in the title. Wow, I'm a good friend. Um, and uh, <laughs> oh. um, this is because you're not sleeping six hours a night, John. I <laughs> get your sleep, John. <laughs> You won't even be able to conjugate oh, sentence, conjugate <laughs> I know. It tomorrow. I know. I'm more. like fucking losing it. <laughs> oh god, this is great. I uh, yeah, he's he was in um, he was in the uh, Odd Couple with um, Nathan Lane, Matthew Broderick. I think I feel like if you saw him, you'd know who he was. But oh, yeah, that sounds he, familiar. Yeah, he's hey, been around forever. I just can't picture his face. I would love yeah. to get you guys on that improv show on the same on the same show. I I, we should all that'd be so amazing. Funny. You, Rob Bartlett. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll get we'll get a we'll bunch try of and pull on. a few more like actor actresses, Broadway improv yeah. people that are all like so funny and engaging. I'll tweet it, Ryan Styles again. We'll get him on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd I would, be would love to ask you too. What if you were to give a piece of advice to a young you just starting out? What would it be? 
Well, the, the atmosphere is so different now because there's just so much content. And, you know, back in the day you had to, there wasn't anything like that. So um, given this new, uh, here's what I would say to myself. I would say, mm -hmm. you have made friends with people. Don't be afraid to call them. Because oh. I had I had sort of a, um, I've worked with so many great people who, who I know loved me and like really wanted to be friends. And I didn't, like I had a self-esteem issue. Like I didn't think that we could be friends because they were a big star, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I needed to believe in myself more because I, I'm worthy and I'm enough. Yeah. All of that, you know, like, yeah. I, I, yeah. So I would say, and I would, I really encourage this, especially in young girls because it's, it's just different being female than it is being male. Male have male, male just have more privileges in a way that it's just given to them just for being male. And yep. I feel like um, yeah. women, young women really need and girls need um, the boost to know to say your ideas matter. You you know you are funny. You are you are whatever whatever it is you are right. You yeah. are yeah. that and and believe in it and don't second guess it and just you know like believe in yourself and and be who you want to be and don't try to be something for other people. Mm, that's great advice. That, yeah, I'm 60. I'm in my sixth decade. I had my 60th birthday in November. And oh, my birthday is in November. It's, when's your birthday? November 28th. I'm the 8th. Oh, oh my nice. God. That's so, crazy. Yeah, I was born the day that Kennedy was elected. November 8th, 1960. And, um, wow. Yeah. And so I'm 60 now. I don't feel, I don't know what that means, but, but I feel like it's time to be, to be stepping into my elder shoes, even though I'm, don't feel like an elder. Um, but in some ways I mean that in like, it just, uh, be, you know, know who you are, believe in yourself, you know, don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, yeah. so that's what I would say to my younger self, like, go for it. I did go for it. I was completely gung ho and I knew exactly what I wanted. And I knew I wanted to be a working actor and I've been a working actor and I haven't done another job since 1990. And like, I, you know, I mean, wow. I, I know, wow. and that's, and that's saying something in, because I'm not an A-list, you know, I mean, I'm not a star. And so you're, I'm one of the working people, you know, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's, yeah. I look at these old movies that my dad watches on TCM and there's all these old character actors and they're in everything. Like what this guy's in this, this movie's in that movie. That, yep. That's who I am. Like I go, Oh, I'm, I'm one of those working character actors, you know? Yeah. And, the, but, and but people like, they're the ones that are always remembered. You know what I mean? Like everybody, yeah. like I, like when I was saying before, like I've got met, like you, I know like most of the stuff you've been in, but you stick out in my head is like, I feel like I know you. You know, like your characters are always super great. You played a different variety of people all the time. Like when you, when I saw you in stuff when I was younger, I'm like, oh, it's gonna be great. <laughs> Maybe oh, Kevin yeah. it. It's gonna be awesome. You didn't see Meet the Deedles, did you? <laughs> I will now. No, man. I don't. I know. I don't. I was gonna, I don't think I saw that. No. <laughs> oh, it's my first movie. It's, oh. but it's Paul. I think it's Paul Walker's first movie. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it's like. Ridiculous. Anna Gasteyer and I play oh. um, uh, Mel and Mo, who are park rangers who are getting their like ranger badges or some shit. I don't know. Dennis Hopper's in it. It's like just this. <laughs> cool. And it's the, just the worst movie. But I oh. have the best stories. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, so yeah. What is that, what is that, what's one of your favorites? When he talks about it, he goes, so I was watching Meet the Doodles. And um, <laughs> because he goes, I'm like, don't talk about it. Like, it's the worst movie I ever did. Like, you got to you gotta have a couple of those. You know, you just do. Yeah. Gig. Oh, that's you, hilarious. It you is own it. I feel like you've made everything you're in yours. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I'm when when <laughs> I'm not going to lie. When you think of A League of Their Own, I don't think of Madonna. I think of Marla Hooch. Like, yeah, of course. I, you know, like, it's it's yours. So I feel like that's a big thing. And and the interactions with you and John, like, like seriously, every time you interact with another character in that movie, that whole scene is just stolen because it's you, you, with you and John Lovitz. And then of course, uh, when you're with the, you know, the, the, um, oh my God. Uh, well, I don't remember her name either. And I feel really bad now. One of the characters, the, um, the woman that's supposed to be in charge of yes. you guys. The yes. Yes. She played Miss Cuthbert. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Like, at, like every time you're with those guys, like it's it's you. It's your scene. That those move. That's all those scenes are you. Wow. Thanks. That's very sweet. Yeah. I, look, at, I just love. I love what I do, and that's what I've always wanted to do, and I've had the opportunity to do it. And I know so many talented people that are friends that have not had the opportunities that I've had. So I just, I just feel so lucky. I just feel so lucky. That's awesome. That's yeah. great to hear. That'd be great if you were, if you, if, even if you said the opposite though, and you were like, God damn it, I deserved it. <laughs> Start flipping shit over. And let me tell you another thing about it. Oh, no. <laughs> I know so many talented people, but they were not as good as me. <laughs> you know what? Let me tell you something about, uh, <laughs> that's when the fake cigarette comes out again. There's a real one, but it's super long. She's like, let me tell you something. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> Listen. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I love the raised eyebrow. I could only do one, but I got. I, I, I love that. Oh, you can? Maybe it's a thing. Maybe you can only do one. <laughs> yeah. I was. Oh, I, I had a gym teacher. Nobody thought this sentence was coming up, by the way. I had a gym teacher. <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought? Uh, who, for some reason, I remember this when I was a kid. This is elementary school, probably like third grade, who basically said, if you learn to do one thing, uh, like uh, socially, Learn to raise one eyebrow. She's like, it's a mo it's a game changer. And I thought, what the f is she talking about? But I love like that's a great expression. Right. She's like, it'll end a con like if you do that, you don't have to say anything. And I was like, all right. Do you know what's funny? Are you funny? left handed or right handed? I'm right. I'm a righty. And at which eyebrow do you bring up? The right one. <clears throat> See, I'm I'm a right handy, but I do the left one. I don't know. But you know, John Belushi could do both. Yes. Yeah, he could. Yeah. A few people I, I know who could do it. Both. If I tried it, I've tried to do the left one because it's driven me insane. I can't quite comprehend. But if I do it, if I try to do it for too long, it just looks like the side of my face is dead. Where I'm because I'm just like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Officially yeah. had the stroke. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why can't I do the left one? I don't know. It feels like there's nothing. Actually, it's kind of wearing me now, but I'm like, what is that? I don't know what it is. I can wiggle my ears though, too. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> I could do that as well. If I, if you could, yeah, I could wiggle my ears. I used to be extremely double jointed, where I would be able to, and then a doctor was like, "You should probably stop doing that." But I used to be able to <laughs> hold my hands behind my back, hold on onto them, and throw them over my head without <laughs> letting go. Oh. Ow! Ow! Oh. <laughs> ow! That's ow! Yeah, I can't do it anymore. But yeah, I used to do that, and he'd be like, "Oh no, you're tearing a lot of things." When you do that. And I was like, oh, really? And then, of course, yeah. That was, uh, uh, I didn't know. I was like, look at this. I, there's no, I thought I was like a superhero, but no. My, uh, my oh, wife you. just chimed in. She said, tell her about the pickle tickle story. So oh. uh, I, I'm going to tell you a real quick story. I think I've told this to John before, but my wife and her sister play, and the, and the kids, her sister's kids, they drive in the car and they'll play a game where they just say a quote from a movie and then you got to guess the movie and they'll oh. go back and forth. So she came up to a part with uh, the John Lovitz character from Leave Their Own, where she's like, she's like, I'm going to have to go home and give my wife a little, uh, little pickle tickle, right? So our nephew in the back seat just looks out the window, doesn't say anything to anybody else, and goes, pickle tickle? Pickle tickle? What do you, tickle somebody with a pickle? Like, he didn't get it because he's so innocent. <laughs> so she came home, and she's like, you're going to have to – tickle this kid with a pickle. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, the only thing worse than this kid going to school talking about a pickle tickle is saying his uncle gave him a pickle tickle. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, it's not happening. Oh, my God. But yeah. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. Did that he ever figure out what it was? Not yet. Knock on wood. He hasn't come across him. And our sister just turns to him and goes, thanks for that. Because yeah. <laughs> like at some point, she's going to have to deal with that question. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's like when I was oh. a little kid, I would say, make love, not war. How do you make love? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> how do you make it? This is just love, love. How do you make love? I don't know. My mother that's just... hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, there's, there's a, a bunch of answer. stuff that just nobody. I, my first curse word when I was a kid was in Italian. Oh. And I didn't know. I didn't know. I just because they would curse in Italian around me. So that I wouldn't say it when I was in school. And I was like a little kid and I dropped one of my favorite toys and it broke. And I just went, my fangool. And then everyone was like, <laughs> and just turned and looked at me. And I was like, what? And they were like, he doesn't know what he said. Don't say anything. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, they were like, nothing. Just 
Don't say that again, reaction. I guess. God, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> but that was, uh, that was the end of that. One. Yeah. So. My first scotch was when I was like four. That was good. You had what? What? Really? Scotch when I was four. I uh, My grandfather always had scotch. And it looked remarkably like my apple juice. Yes, it and, did. And uh, yeah. And I, but like an idiot though, because they would put it out of reach. But I had an apple juice and I was looking for it and I saw it up high and I was like, well, what kind of an idiot puts my apple juice that? So I grabbed a chair, <laughs> took it and was like, Gah! and then it was like, couldn't breathe. <laughs> it's like, ah! like, it was just like the worst. Wow. And they were like, and my grandpa was like, I oh, drank my scotch, <laughs> put it down or whatever. I'm like dying. <laughs> oh, my cared. God. Yeah, oh. that was fun. You, you hate scotch to this day? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I, I I do not. I like. I told you, I'm I'm a big. I love tequila, and um, I love tequila too much. Uh, I like tequila, and I like uh, I like Jack, and um, like yeah, whiskey, whiskey, and I like uh, anything anything with like a like if it's vodka mixed with something, I can't have vodka on its own because that was like the first time I got really sick. Ah, was vodka shots. Okay. We just moved into an apartment. My first one when I was like 22 and uh, <laughs> we were celebrating and I, we didn't have any shot glasses. So I did shots out of Dixie cups and that was the end of that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And Boone's I, and Farm. To this day, Can't do what is it? Boone's Farm. Oh. Boone's Farm. Yeah. It's like okay. eighth grade. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, very something. Mm. Yeah. Good thing it was, oh. I would never want to drink as an adult anyway. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah, yeah. That stuff is. I know what you mean. It's like Art. there's like a. Uh, what, yeah. What's funny I is, I didn't. I didn't get turned off to a liquor. I got turned off to the mixer. So in high school, I remember we went to like the oh, St. Patty's wow. Day parade, and I mixed the vodka with ar Snapple orange juice. Still can't drink Snapple orange juice. Like oh. it just it turns my stomach to smell it. Yeah, and yeah. It, but it wasn't the orange juice. I, I hope, or it was bad orange juice. One or the other. <laughs> but yeah, I got yeah, they, that's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I got a good story about mixers. So we, I went to a my friends and I every year go to Ocean City, Maryland, and uh, we we just have a we have like a blast. We we go and we hang out or whatever, and we just drink for five days straight. So one of my friends brings her friend, and um, uh she's you know she shows up later whatever but i already mixed i come with my tequila pre-mixed already right so whatever it is like for margarita stuff so i already did everything and i had it out in a bottle she came with a bottle of patron and she grabbed but i already put my yeah i mixed mine um uh in a tequila mixed bottle <laughs> like a jackass oh. so she just uh-huh so she doesn't know so she's got the patron and the tequila mix pouring it in and she gets plastered before any of us and we were and i was like i never met her before so i just went to my friend like, god your friend's a lightweight she's like falling all over herself cut to i go into the kitchen i go to pour myself another drink she takes the patron and tours it in my glass i'm like the fuck are you doing <laughs> so i could try to get you know whatever she was like you got to mix it and i was like it's mixed and she was like and that moment of like all of us realizing what she had done we were dying she was plastered clarity oh my god it was oh so good god. yeah she roofied herself <laughs> you know, that drunk. reminds me of drunk history and i just i love that those people really do get drunk yeah i thought I you know it. how do they do that like with liability and shit like you gotta sign like 85 pages of like you know i promise that's what my yeah one of my friends who worked on that show said that they had to do that like the stuff that you have to sign you know to to just kind of waive any kind of because one of them I don't know who it was because I don't know the comic, but one of the dudes did get like uh, they kept having to like wait, pause, reshoot, go back because they were drinking so much they did get sick on the set. So they were just like, you know, and then George Washington, you know, who is <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it'll get so you. It just, yeah, that's I don't know. That'd be amazing to do, though. You know, the funny thing about that show, too, is you learn a lot. Like, yeah. I know that it's in a fucked up way, but you learn a lot. Oh, totally. Agreed. When, that's gonna stick with you more than any history class. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember like that and uh, and uh, like Schoolhouse Rock and Peabody and uh, Sherman. the fuck's his name Peabody Sherman and, and Peabody. Peabody. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I remember all that stuff. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's all good that. stuff. Man, did you have anybody that you met 
that was that like starstruck you? Because I feel like you've been on so many big, big projects. Have you like come across somebody where it the biggest person I was starstruck by was Bob Newhart because I had grown up on watching Bob Newhart like wow every Uh, and I did a he had a TV show the one that didn't succeed I was on Um, (laughs) he did did the Bob Newhart he did Newhart and then he did a show called Bob he said his next show was going to be called the and uh, (laughs) I did Bob and it it, they had done um, a season of it before and then they were changing the format and i was in the second season when the format changed so he was comic he worked for a comic he worked for a greeting card company and he left the greeting card company to go go have his dream of being a a, um a car a cartoon a cartoonist cartoonist Cartoonist. and in, in my thing he has that does, didn't pan out, and he goes back to the greeting card company. And I played Chris Selinsky, his secretary, who who runs the office. And she's got like you know ten kids, and so <laughs> suckling a, a you know a newborn at her breast, like you know, he, and he he just can't handle it at all. Like he just he's just like, how are you doing, Chris? Like, but I would be <laughs> my character was really acerbic and like just like. What do you want, Bob? No, Bob. We don't have that, Bob. You know, I was just <laughs> but then they cut and I would become a complete idiot. I'd be like, my dad said that he knew you <laughs> had ice cream in Oak Park um, at Roosevelt Road. Five. <laughs> <laughs> It might have been 1946. I don't. I, I couldn't be a human being. I became a complete idiot with it. And then we oh. go back. We'd go back to the set and we'd start again. And my character's like, What do you want, Bob? Fuck, you know, catch this shit. And then we'd cut and be like, And then maybe have ice cream. You know, I just didn't know how to be. It was so, oh God. It was mortifying. <laughs> I can't. I have tears. Oh my God. Oh, that fucking hurt. Completely tongue tied, and I've worked with a lot of people, but he was the one. I just, it was him and Betty White. They were both on. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bob. That's fantastic. <laughs> no. I love he's he's fucking, he was one of the uh, first dudes. My, gr- my grandfather loved Bob Newhart, and he had the comedy album when I was a kid. He, he let me listen to the, and I was dying at just all the old bit, the phone call bit, the dri- the car driving bit, all that stuff. So good. Yeah. So good. And yes. in this one of the scenes that I have on my reel um, is him coming out and saying, um, hey, Chris, uh, do, do you have the whatever the reports? I go, I don't know where those are, Bob. He goes, well, they're in the, the folder. I, I don't I don't know what drawer it's in. He's like, well, it's right. It's in the bottom drawer right here. And he pulls it and he goes, and, and I go, well, you go, you need Bob? And he's like, thanks. You know? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, it's just. I loved, and I just didn't know how to be. And, and you know what? That's another person I probably could have stayed in contact with, but didn't because I was a goofball and didn't. Believe. He doesn't want to talk to me about ice it, cream. You know? You're filling me with a with a little bit of hope here because I feel like I keep I I do that I have I have the same kind of inclination that you do about like reaching out. Like I'm usually pretty bold. I'm more bold than than most people are. Like even with uh, even when we were doing the charity thing, like people I'd never spoke to on the phone before. I was like, I'll call them. Right. I got another, you know, whatever. But like. I feel like there's that weird thing when you think your friends like I don't know what stops me from doing it. Like I, I like I'm glad you say that because you do know I might call you when I, if I'm in the area. I sure hope you know. Seriously, <laughs> okay, you can. Because like that's like, but I feel the same way though because I'm like nobody wants to you know hear from or am I being annoying? Email you know I do the same shit. <laughs> well, and the thing is, the thing is, you know, we're all human beings and we all have that. Mm-hmm. All, but you know, I'm here to discourage you from. It's good to have a little bit of it because it's sort of like sure. it's kind of a check, and you, you you need to be you need to stay in check with you don't want to become too much of an asshole. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, whatever. it keeps you from following people home. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's probably the best part. <laughs> I just you know I wish that I could have been you know could I could have sent Christmas cards. I could have oh. right, just like I could have yeah. I could have been more in contact. Yeah, I didn't yeah. do that, and I'm. That's I kind of, I really kind of regret that because I feel like I lost out. I watch Mel Brooks with Carl Reiner and they're talking and I thought oh. I could have had 
I could have gone to breakfast with Mel and hung out and talked. He absolutely at the time would have, would have, would have loved for me to do that. I think. Right. Yes. Yeah. Too, too shy is the wrong word because I'm bold too. I'm bold initially, but I don't mm -hmm. want, I can't really follow through. Very yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah, unless oh, it's somebody else's, I, I feel like the same way where I'm like, if it's somebody else, if anybody can do it to me. Like, I'm available to be reached. I don't care how busy. Like, right. I always, because for me, like, any kind of social stuff is more important than whatever. I always feel like I can get back to somebody. You know what I mean? Unless I'm, you know, uh, working, showering, or doing whatever, I'll, I'll hit somebody back up. I'll stay in touch. But I never feel like right. it, they want it to be the other way. Where I was like, if I'm the one doing it, like, I'm like, if they want me to do it, I'm like, no, nobody wants to, if they, if they reach out to me, even with like, like I met people over the pandemic and I'm just like, eh, they probably don't want to keep in touch after the pandemic. I'm lucky to, I don't know. After the, after <laughs> everybody goes back to work, I Tom may not want to do the show anymore. <laughs> I don't Tom know. I mean, me. maybe. Tom told me he hates me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. I'm out of here, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the light. <laughs> oh, oh, man. It's so interesting, it. right? I feel like that's very social dynamic because this other person could feel the same way you feel where they're like, all right, I don't sure. want to reach out too much. And, you know, and it goes back yeah. and forth. I think that's a great piece of advice. I, Me and my friends used to say that, too, because I've. I've been blessed to be in like a really fun circle. I've always just done what I enjoy in my life and then find ways to make money at it. So right. we worked in like celebrity circles pretty early, like from like my 21st birthday, like we were doing stuff like that. Wow. Mm -hmm. But the funny part is, it's just like you said, you have that contact in your phone and it takes you 10 years to realize if you don't use it, you lose it. Right. So like, you know, so if you don't maintain the contact, you burn the contact, you might as well just erase it because numbers yeah. change. And it's just so true. And I, I think that was a great piece. That's a piece of advice that I've never hear people give, but it's such a good piece of advice. Yeah, it's the first time I've heard anybody say it. Because because like when I think about what people text me, they don't really have like I'll go. Oh, I don't have anything to say. I can't text that person. But sometimes it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Like I don't have to have something like earth shatteringly right. important. Right. Well, like, like hey, thinking about you. When people say, do you want to, you know, I, we want to interview for a show or whatever, whatever. And I think oh, I have nothing to promote. And then I think, well, fuck it. Who cares? Like, you know, I can go right. and just yeah, tell a story about what I've done. Like, you know. Yeah. And and I was thinking, yeah. this whole time I've been thinking, what can I promote? And I thought, <laughs> I thought of something. Oh, nice. What is it? So the cameo, those little cameo videos. Oh, yeah. yes. So I'm doing them. And. I'm doing birthday shout outs to a lot of like mostly League of Their Own fans. And yeah. I did that six in April. Oh, that's hey, awesome. Hey, Congratulations. Nice. They take so much of it. Oh my God. I, like 60% of it goes to yep. Cameo and, 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 and Apple. Yeah, yeah, they get you. For so sure. can I give you? So I. 2550. 20, maybe 3750 <laughs> if I'm lucky. But mostly 2840 or some crap. I'm like, what the. Right. Fuck? I mean, so, I don't, care about the money i mean i mean i don't i'm doing right. it for like i'm talking for like a minute or two you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. but it, i feel bad that i'm asking this and that i'm you know that i asked for 50 bucks and now you know it's like 28 bucks of it is mine yeah i know <laughs> yeah. I, I i got i got on cameo uh like six months ago or something like that or whatever first of all some of them are a little weird i know you can say no but it was like this one person kept doing it over and over again. And then at one point they were like, can you do another one? But can you do it with the leather jacket on? And I was like, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, I, uh, I don't know. But anyway, and then, but um, there's another one that I just got hit up for called Venywhere. Was supposed to be video anywhere, so it's like Venywhere. I don't know why they do it, but they don't take as much money as Cameo does. So if you want, I can refer, I can send I, you the email. I would enjoy it if you would text me that. I would love go. to. Thank you. They, they, I just had a conversation with them on the phone, uh, on the phone, which is great. That's a hook. If somebody <laughs> says they're gonna call me, I'm like, because they emailed me and they gave me the spiel. And then at the end of it, I saw if you'd like to set up a phone call with one of our Dumb. tech, you know, whatever. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, you can call me. <laughs> yeah. Great. Now I'm just starting to sound lonely. But yeah, you can. <laughs> I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not. 
<laughs> but yeah, cool. You like the phone. I'm, I appreciate you. that, you, John. I appreciate that. I thank you. Just to talk on the fucking phone yeah. once a week. <laughs> Why hasn't John called me this week? Oh my God. <laughs> He's gonna call you Tuesday, and I'm supposed to talk at four. <laughs> <laughs> And then Megan's only going to send back emojis. <laughs> <laughs> it's all—it's a lot of this guy and <laughs> the crying face emoji. Yeah, the crying face. And then it's like a whale, an octopus, and a giraffe. And I'm like, what does any of that mean? Is she at the zoo? Is this the zoo's thing? <laughs> Zeus, Zeus. <laughs> oh my god! So, so fucking good. great. Oh, I, right. I am definitely looking forward to doing more with you, Megan. I hope Me you too. Do come with us for like some of the improv would, stuff and such. So I fun. To anytime, if I'm available, I would t- and, and I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to because this has been this has just been really a guess. Oh, same. same likewise, yeah. this is my fa- this is my favorite episode. So this is the longest episode too. Yay! So this is great. Fa- yeah. I, I haven't. La- I'm I'm in pain. I haven't laughed. I know, on like you have the soreness on your cheeks. That's how you know it was a good absolutely. episode. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's great. Well, I hope you get your ring light fixed because I feel like that's. Uh, I don't know. I've never seen anything go out with such a. It was like the sun exploded. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> Dead. Your dead. Because <laughs> I'm just learning the way of the ring, lo- lo- and it's never been on this long. I do cameos for you know a minute and a half, and then it's like, <laughs> you know, that turned off. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't. It didn't work for two hours. No. No. Do you go the extra mile on the on the cameos? Like, do you sit like? Do you like plan? Because I feel like you're very into it. So do you like plan it out? Like you're like, all right, this is how I'm gonna go about it. You know, it's a, I know. No, I, 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 I have my ring light now because I'm all about the ring light. It makes me very happy to have a ring light. Um, and, um, and I sit here. At, this is where I do them. And I yeah. and I just, you know, sometimes I sit in my comfy chair. I have to show you. This will remind you of Roseanne. One moment, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the music. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. That's so <laughs> great. So I, sometimes that's behind my head at my, in my comfy chair. And, um, I love it. Yeah. So nice. That's awesome. Yeah. My mom yeah. made this for my sister um, back in the Beautiful. Summer. Yeah. Looks and warm. There's a pillow to match. It's the yeah. one that everybody you- raved about on the uh, on that episode as your bridesmaid, yep. right? Same sister? <laughs> what, what? Same what? sister that was your bridesmaid on the episode? Different sister. This, oh. sister, this sister, and I hate to bring it. I'm going to bring it down for a minute, had a brain tumor. Oh, he died oh from, from uh, brain oh, cancer. So, so sorry. Kid, so sorry to hear no, that. Okay. It's, it was years ago, but it, you, when you were talking about kid cancer, with anytime you're doing brain tumor shit, call me because I. Oh, will do. Because I, I absolutely support all of that, and I'm, absolutely. you know, happy be happy to help in any way that I can. Sweet. Um, so yeah, I'm. Uh, my sister Mary Kay was her name. She was, oh. she was 56 when she died. And, yeah. Young. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. Just like all of a sudden one day, like had it fell down in her apartment and never went back. And five months later, she was dead. Like it was that. It was like, wow. Yeah. Brain I thought, crazy. I thought you were going to say, because I, I had an, uh, my wife said, I, I need you to say Farfit, 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 Nugan? <laughs> Farf- Farf- Google, if I have a shoe, I would never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that was great! I love so it. Good. I was terrified of my horse. Really? Were you? I was terrified of my horse. I had wow. to take lessons, and this horse knew that I was afraid of it. Like it uh, totally knew, and it was like, it felt it. and I would be like, oh, god, "What's happening?" <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I like, swear. Those eating, are eating the fake. They had made like um, fake full uh, leaves that they had painted and all that, and, right. and the horse would like, you know, go off to eat. I'd be like, up, 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 up. you know, I'm trying to act like I know what I'm yeah. doing, and then I'd be like, oh, why the horse was going to help me with the <laughs> <laughs> with my little trainer gal? Yep. I swear to God, those those are the one animals that like like know and love to fuck with people when they're afraid of them. What, my friends and I went horseback riding, and one of my friends, Tara, had never been on a horse and was also terrified of actually being on a horse and so we would be like a like a ways ahead i swear to god it was like city slickers we'd be like a ways ahead of her 
And and all of a sudden, I just hear her like screaming her horse's name in the background, like, "No, no, do not go that way!" And, like <laughs> he's off in the woods, and we're like, "Stay on the trail!" Oh, oh. <laughs> he's like, "Help!" It's like they know, and, and they really do. They know when you are afraid of them. They're like, "I'm in charge. Fuck this chick. She doesn't." Know <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, exactly. I'm gonna take advantage, and they do. They do. They know it. They do. So in the in the scene where I jump on the horse. Mm -hmm. Which I totally didn't do. Uh, <laughs> I had I think, like a ladder to get up. There. I had a suit too, so I was like trying to negotiate. And the gal that played my um, her name was Marguerite Happy, my my oh. um, my stunt woman. Mm -hmm. she was amazing. She had the fancy up. She's you know get up right up there. It made me look really good. But then the horse rears its head back, and it and Mel made a sound like a like it hit my head, and then uh -huh. we gallop off. And my face is like. Because I was <laughs> terrified in that one. That is Megan going, oh, oh, God. The horse brought his head back. And it looks like it hits my head. And then we, he made a sound effect. And then, you know, we wrote, we ride off. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the, hilarious. Every time I see it, it makes me laugh so hard because I was terrified. Terrible. Wow, that's <laughs> fucking so crazy. I didn't know that. They were, they looked like gigantic horses, though. That like, they they did not i was like oh my god they're like twice the size of a normal because like you know they were you could see them from november like like one of the scenes is like you guys are up and they're from like even like looking at the angle they were looking at i was like those are big horses well my horse was was a um was a kind of a pony it was a there was a, i forget what they called them mm -hmm. people are gonna be like it was a schmash 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 huge back like it's it was oh like a dinner table it was like was it a clydesdale wow. no it's not a clydesdale oh, i was gonna say when i was a kid i was like I, i've never been under like 225 pounds since i'm in like the second grade right so i remember riding a horse as a kid they put me on like the big horse which was a clyde i, I remember it being a clydesdale that was so much bigger than the other horses yeah and i remember being mm -hmm. on it it was so crazy but now that i don't know it this was a, this was a kind of a pony, but it didn't seem like a pony at all. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they didn't look like ponies. Yeah, no, it was a big horse. Yes, they were. Horse. It looked almost looked like the equivalent of the horse in uh, for Richard Rapport, the Big John. Big John. Yep. That was another one that was like a gigantic, like a. Yeah. I'm like, that's crazy. They scare yeah. the shit out of me, like uh, because just because of how powerful they are. I don't mind like whatever, but right. I've had friends who who um, you know, one of them had a horse farm and they did race horses and shit like that. And then, you know, calm, calm. And then they'd be like, and then there's, there's always one that's like, and then there's Black Bart, you know what I mean? And there's this horse, like, you know, running around the whole th playing cards with other horses that are bad, you know, whatever they do, you know, the horse stuff that's scary. When I'm like, <laughs> well, horse I, stuff. Christopher Reeves. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. my God. I know. Yeah. And it happened. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know. It was. Yeah. But, yeah. I just, I have a, I, horses are not my gig. That's the thing, I though. That's step on my foot when I was in fourth grade, Ooh. and stand on my foot and not get off. Like it just wow. cr like crushing my foot, like, Bleh. and I was like pushing it, and it, of course wasn't doing anything. So, so i you know, the horses and I we've never had a love for each right. other. So that's yeah, saying these horses must saddles be where they punch a horse. Are you like? <laughs> Finally. <laughs> oh I'm I'm if I ever, I would never. No. Horse, I would be afraid it would, you know. Oh yeah, kick me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, the yeah. Christopher. That's the thing. Like that. Like you know, how do you fall? Like you know, you know what I mean. Like that's. A, I've never. Like, but that's horses. If they throw you, I guess that's it. Yeah, took out Superman. I mean, he Take tried Superman to to paraplegic. Like yeah. I know. God Almighty. Awful. Yeah. yeah. It's just that's just fucking terrible. And that brings. Yeah. Uh, that's like that, that was in the room down, man. <laughs> I was just about and to on say. Good night. And on that well, note, well, yeah. Well. No, I, I was gonna show you. I got my. Uh, I got. Uh, you were talking about Rob Williams. He's on my watch. Oh, um, cool. I don't know. Like, cool. It's in the thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm a huge Rob Williams fan, so the fact that you met him was just amazing to me. I never got to meet him, but yeah, 
was... so many great stories. You have so, yeah, I'm seriously. sure you have a million more too. I feel like you, you came packing. You didn't even need anything to plug. You had stories and fu- you were fucking hilarious and we'll we're friends now. So I'm going to clip that and Please, put it up somewhere. I am going to try. I'm serious. I will try and get and see that. I'll try and maybe I could send. I'm afraid to send the tape to something and have it made into a DVD or whatever. I'm afraid it'll get. Right. I'm just afraid to put Kevin out of my possession. I'm gonna yeah, find no, a way. I'll find it. out how to do it. So we'll send you how to how to do it yourself. I'll find a yeah. way to do okay. it. To you. Okay. I will. I would love that. Because I actually used to have a VHS to DVD, like a, a DVD. It was a VHS player that could burn DVDs. Wow. So you could tra- Yeah, you could transfer it but, over. If ew. I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, uh actually it was just a dude. It was just two dudes that were <laughs> working it out. <laughs> <laughs> Catching it onto the thing. I was like, I used to have. And they're like, no, you didn't. It was, uh, yeah. yeah. I picture the Flintstones and a bird pecking away at something. Right, right. It's a living. Uh, <laughs> it's a living. I love those birds. I always, I always wanted a clam to shave. That's why I don't shave because I haven't got a clam and a bee, a bee and a clam. Show. Mm. Boy, were they clever. That was. Yeah. Out. They were the turtle that was the uh, that was the shopping cart. And how about the the um the uh was it a goat? What was what was the um? Oh, the lawnmower. The lawnmower, yeah. It was a goat. Was it a goat? Yeah, yeah I think it was. Yeah, it was a goat. Uh, yeah, that would eat That's the grass. So oh yeah, because in the uh, in the Jetsons meet the Flintstones, George Jetson is mowing the lawn with the goat, and it's like yeah, eating and yeah. How oh, crazy great. is it that slowly but surely we are turning into the Jetsons? Like this is Mr. Spacely and slowly but surely my fucking ass. Where's my flying car? Oh, so <laughs> I James Bond with my my little Ooh, Apple um, wrist right? in the Talking pool so today, well. and ring a ring a ring. I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm James Bond. Talking about my yes, I love doing that. <laughs> Help my friend when you call. I said if. You ever call and I say 007, that means you're on my watch and you're on speaker. Because uh-huh. don't start just talking to me about whatever, because you could be. That's you know. so cool. Wait. I say 007. You're going to love this then, but you have to have somebody else that has it too. I down- I made my friends. I'm like the bully of my group. I'm like, so I made my friends download this thing called Voxer. And it's a it's a free walkie-talkie app. And you and it li- and you can get it on your, yes. There's so you can literally. Add this. There's a walkie-talkie. That's right. Have you done it? I- I I know I don't know anybody who likes to do that shit, but there is a walk. All, all I can picture is John going, Shh, "Night, Megan. Shh, night, John." She's <laughs> <laughs> two years older. She she and I live. She lives behind me in the house behind me. We discovered that we had walkie talkie. We did them. We were like, oh. "I'll call her right now and see if she." Oh, it's ten. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome. Okay. Apple should pay us for this live demonstration. Here we go. All right, see the little yellow yeah. thing. Oh, whoops! The yellow one is the walkie-talkie. Let's see if I right, can. Right, right. Let's see. Come on. Don't, don't show me up in front of the people. <laughs> They're watching. I guess she's off. Her phone must be off for the night because it's not working. But oh, it does great. work. And when we talk to each other, we. Have, I said you have to say over and out. You have to say Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Over. I know was done. I'm like, are you done? You have to say Roger when you're done. So, I, <laughs> oh my God! Wait a minute. Let me six and eight again. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh my God! I lo- I'm like looking to see. Yeah, I do have it on oh, mine. Good. Oh, I'm gonna have you to have fucking somebody play else with in, this. in the area that's near you. You can't do it to me, John, because we're too far away. But I know you lived behind. I know it's gotta be. <laughs> Walkie talkie unavailable right now. <laughs> oh my god, that's great! Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, another time, I, we'll, I'll show you a demonstration of that. Sweet, Perfect. yes, love to. You'll have to come back for sure. Well, we'll I'll tell you about the improv show and stuff too. We'll get that going. Great, great. awesome. Absolutely. Oh my so god, fun. it's been so thank fun. you. Oh, I'm so glad it makes me so happy. Such yeah. a pleasure. Me too. Yes, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. So wonderful to meet you. And you text me, fucker. I <laughs> <laughs> and please do text me about the video thing that's like oh in- anywhere yes yeah. absolutely i'll send you that information that's why you have to send it to me i don't remember yeah yeah i'll no, get you I'll the info on transfer that video over okay. oh yeah sure. yeah and the transfer of the video 100%. too awesome. good stuff oh uh, thank you so much thanks guys <laughs>
Utopia tonight. 